Happy Friday, everybody! Cheers! And in honor of uh, Pride Month and shit, another daiquiri. This time, I wanted to represent not just the lesbians, but also the, the gays. So, it's strawberry mango. I had it mango, fellas. Oh, yeah. Four and a half shots of tequila and just this one little motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Happy Friday, everybody. <laughs> Let me hit it for Super Saiyan Joku, who's here. I want to have the world. The world's most comfortable pair of ultra soft. <laughs> And Joe Gomer Kyle just showed up. Let me hit it for him. What's your name, scumbag? Gomer Pyle. Private Pyle, I'm going to give you three seconds to wipe that stupid looking grin off your face, or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you. One, two, three. Shazam. Cheers. Fucking uh, Gomer. I'll fix it. The lagging, I mean. It should be like two seconds. There. Hopefully it doesn't lag anymore. I always forget to turn that off. Anyways. Um, fucking uh, cheers to y'all motherfuckers. Glad you're here and shit. Uh, Joku, uh, I'm on some of that shit. I'll let you know in a little bit. Uh, but let's go. Let's get started. Let you all know, of course, that on uh, we do have three channels. The emergency broadcast is in case we get banned again, and that one's there for an emergency. But the illegal underground broadcast channel, which you should be subscribing to, is where we watch pay per views, and we're gonna be watching Forbidden Door Sunday, June the thirtieth at six p.m. Motherfuckers, it's going down. And if WWE ever decides to do pay per views in America, we'll be watching those too. Sons of bitches, be showing to other countries and ass, you motherfuckers. Fuck you. Anyway, so we're watching AWs. Uh, I think it's next Sunday. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it is. Seven, eight, I don't know, maybe next Sunday? Do you all know? I don't remember. No. Anyways, just remember to sign up and shit. Or ass. Anyways, let's get into the, the fucking comments, because there was like 20-something comments. I think we went viral again and shit. Uh, let me go ahead and... Go remember our social medias at Cinnaman665 for the for the X. Uh at the underground underscore underground underscore broadcast for the IG. And we are no longer doing the Twitter. I mean the TikTok. Fuck you. Yeah. TikTok. You dicks. Um it's there, but we're not uploading anymore, okay? It's over. Uh whatever you send me, I'll go ahead and post here. Uh, like Super Saiyan Joku, who sent me this earlier today. Did we enough time, motherfuckers? He said, I stopped by the local weed store to get ready for the wild night with some woke pack members. Ain't that night? Ain't that right, son of man? Gummer Kyle, Indie Phantom, Rocco, fuck my life, Joe, Prime, Trumpets, Timmons, The Cunt, just to name a few. At the underground broadcast. Let's fucking go. Hashtag. Live. Cheers, more flowers. Hashtag. Smoke weed every day. Oh, yeah. Cheers. <laughs> and cheers to Anthony Timmons, who's here. I feel weird because usually I'm smoking. I still have that. 
that like something's missing and it's that you know what i'm saying fellas uh but it's in me joku because i just saw the old blunts and shit you're smoking man i can't wait till they sell that shit in the stores like but this is literally the best next thing. Uh, I went back to the store and the, 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 the Arab guys are like, how was it, my friend? And I said, well, it took about two hours. But when that motherfucker hit, I was higher than any weed. That motherfucker sold me down the street, I told him. And he says, this one is less. The other one was 500 and something. He said, this one's better. And I said, hey, that's less. What do you mean it's better? And he said, no, because this one has. And if you read there. Uh, where does it say? Uh, where does it say? He showed me. Oh, in the back. He says, that THCP, that's the shit that's really hard. Uh, and he says, that's the shit that'll make you fail the drug test. You, if you need to pass a drug test, this is not good for you. And he goes, but the THCP, that's the shit that's good. And he goes, this is stronger than the other stuff. And it tastes better. This is fucking apple flavor. And it didn't taste like ass like the other blue stuff left. The taste in my mouth. That's what I say about that. Um, High on nature, it says. It says, uh, this may be stronger than you expect. Please consume responsibly. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> These things are amazing. I mean, this is fucking way better than smoking weed. I mean, I, I still miss it, you know? I do. I do miss I don't know why. I miss the smoking, you know? Smoke, the breathing, but I do feel better. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but this is amazing, man. Harder than any weed I've ever smoked. I'll tell you like that. Ugh. And that shit I made is super strong too. Anyways, uh, cheers, Super Saiyan Joku. Thank you for leaving me ass on the uh, IG and shit. Uh, but let's get into the comments, and we're gonna start with some fucking guy, some guy named uh, Layback seventy six. Oh, cause he's from nineteen seventy six, or maybe he just likes the seventy sixers, the football team, or some shit like that. I don't know, but he's for sure he's real. He's a real laid back dude. He even got the letter L as an avatar, cause he know not know how to make a fucking picture and shit. Uh, but on the on the X Men ninety seven video that fucking like, I don't know, f January, in ass. God damn it. Super old video five months ago. He goes, Because he's black, you're a joke. Well, thanks. I mean, that's kind of the point of this channel. I can't listen to a guy who wears lipstick. Well, then I guess you never listened to your mom growing up, you dumbass. Um, I... I don't think you understood, because I, I mean, honestly, that video is so old, I didn't even know what the fuck you were talking about. So I actually had to click on my own video and watch it, and I was like, what the fuck, man, and the motherfucker's late to the party and shit. But anyways, I went back and I fucking, uh, I was watching it, and I was saying that Disney was saying, put him in there because he's black. You dumbass. I was saying it didn't make sense for him to be in there without any explanation. Because the last time in the old series, he was sent to the future. So how did he come back in the first place? But there was never an explanation. And then on episode three, all of a sudden, there was a reason why they even had him there in the first place. Because they sent Cable, Nathan, back into the future. And I was like, what a fucking lazy cop-out. Because you still never explain why the fuck Vision, was, I mean, uh, Bishop, was in the fucking present. Uh, that's why it's, it seemed to me, like Marvel Disney said, well, we need a black character in there, just throw Bishop in there, and it'll make sense, because he's going back in the future, take the baby with him. Yeah, but how'd he come back? Oh, don't worry about it, we don't have to explain it. Nobody will fucking ask that question, except for the Son of Man, and nobody watches his fucking channel. And shit. That was Feige, fuck you. 
Anyways. Uh, cheers, laid back. Thank you for commenting, you dick. On a very old video, too. Check out some of the newer stuff and shit. And pay attention, too, motherfucker. I gotta be there explaining to you and shit. They're like, you're not, this channel is not like watching Prometheus. You shouldn't need somebody to explain to you what the fuck I'm saying. God damn it. Cheers. Anyways. Uh, the next comment. Oh, Anthony Timmons. On the Tory spelling is white trash. Or trailer trash, I think. He goes. The only difference between Tory spelling and Hilly Billies is Hilly Billies have more class. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Timmons. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And Tori Spelling, not even like, the, cause you know, like when people in Beverly Hills and white privileged motherfuckers are hot as fuck. Tori, Fela, Tori Spelling is looking like an alien and shit. Her eyes are popping out of her head and ass. And everybody in 90210 was way hotter than she was. For fuck's sakes. She knew it too. <laughs> Anyways. Cheers, Anthony Timmons. Thank you for commenting, you motherfucker. We love you. Uh, Let me just close this real quick. There. There was another another pour and I had to close. I'm sorry about that. Anyways, uh, next comment. Oh, David Latarte. This fucking Wong motherfucker. On the Jonathan Majors. Uh, it's, uh, it's, what does it say? Is making a comeback. I, let me fix this real quick because that's pissing me off that I can't read it. No, no, I'm not going to be able to. Well, fuck you. Anyways, we'll leave it like that. He says, Johnny getting an award for being convicted of assault is the most Hollywood BS ever. You can't make this kind of stuff up. And he puts a little laughing face. No, you can't. Like, like, oh my God. I think back in the day when Hollywood tried to like... You know, sweep things under the rug and show an image of a celebrity a certain way. It was easier because the internet was not as uh, understood as it is nowadays. Motherfuckers didn't know how to use it. They knew it was there, but didn't know what it was. Uh, and now it's like, man, everybody can see this fucker for, for who he is. And not only that, but the people who are, I don't know why, are trying to support him. That's another thing. That's the video that we did why we have 20. We usually only have like five or six comments. And these are the same motherfuckers, you motherfucking woke packs and shit. But we got like 20 something comments because this video is the one that went viral. Kang is back. Ah, the clickbait. Ah, oh, I got them, folks. I got them, motherfuckers. They, they fucking saw that Kang is coming back to the MCU and they clicked on it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with Ken coming to MCU, my fuckers. Uh, but anyways, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jonathan Majors is a comeback. Went went viral, and so we got all these. You'll read it. We'll read them in a little bit. We got all these Jonathan Major sympathizers and shit, and all these motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just ridiculous how like, you know, uh, these groups blatantly out support you know like stuff like this like oh it's okay you know no it's not okay and i'll get to it in a little bit but i don't want to get too much into it because motherfuckers other motherfuckers left comments and i that let, let, my response is more in line to what they said david latarte thank you for commenting and cheers motherfucker we love you in this channel oh you motherfuckers look at this I'm already almost halfway. That's supposed to last all night. That's like fucking three, four shots in that bitch. I have to just be sipping on water after I finish that. And then what the comments are for? The comments are to get fucked up. <laughs> oh, it's Doug Unfunny. <laughs> Woke as fuck. Woke as fuck, motherfucker. On Jonathan Majors is, is, makes his comeback. He says, 
Damn you, son of man. You always make me second guess if what you're saying is true. I had to look this up and darn it. I cannot believe he is actually getting some award. Seems like it was made up just for him to try to clean up his image or something. Cheer, son of man and the woke pack. Hashtag. And cheers to the cut who just showed up! You can feel it while smoking. You can feel it while drinking. You can feel it getting woke as fuck. So get your slob ready, cause the cut is here. Cheers, mate! Oh, yeah. It's getting too crazy up in this bitch tonight. Doug Unfunny. I'm sorry that you don't know if I'm lying or saying the truth. Uh, but that's kind of the whole point of this channel. It's supposed to keep you guessing. It's shit. <laughs> Cheers, motherfucker. And thank you for representing, you fucking old man. I don't even know how old you are. You might be a kid. <laughs> Anyways, now nah, you're probably not a kid because you, you, you Doug. That's a super old shit. I grew up with that ass. Anyways, here we go on the Jonathan Majors uh, viral video that we we did. Caliber seventy eight forty. Oh, that's a fucking crazy name. He he says, "Sit down, clown." Well, I mean, I am sitting down. You dumbass. It's kind of weird. You tell somebody who is literally sitting down for this to sit down. Anyways, he says, hashtag Jonathan Majors is a hero. Notice how he didn't say my hero. You pussy. Huh? You don't want, to want him to be your hero? He's just a hero to someone in general? Maybe to, to someone who enjoys beating women? That's who he's a hero to. Hey, uh, I went to this guy's channel, and I'm not even playing when I say this. His, this guy's a Jonathan fucking major simp to the max. Most of these videos are about defending him and about signing petitions so that they can show his movie on Netflix and fucking she this guy's in love with jonathan majors oh yeah there's caliber <laughs> that's crazy that there's people out there like that <laughs> that look up to fucking woman beaters as heroes oh my god you must have had a really shitty father growing up or you didn't have a father growing up oh Oh my god, I'm gonna get drunk before we finish the goddamn comments, y'all. Alright, let's see who else is next. Oh, DJ New Kid! <laughs> Under the Jonathan Majors, this is a comeback. He just puts a bunch of laughing faces. Hey, we have a Cheers, DJ New Kid. Thank you for representing and uh, watching the videos, motherfucker. You don't show up a lot, but at least I know you're here. Alright, alright, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Appreciate you. Oh, David Latarte, that's Wong, motherfucker, on the fucking Kevin Spacey is at his lowest. He puts, about to start seeing Kevin at Chipotle asking, bowl or burrito? No disrespect to Chipotle employees, of course. Hey, you know what? Fuck Chipotle is all I'm gonna say, David Latarte. Fuck you, Chipotle. That's the most hated restaurant in my fucking being. You want to know why? Because those motherfuckers, they're cheapskates. And they fucking, whenever you ask for anything, whether it's a burrito, a taco, or a bowl and shit, they slam the biggest spoon with rice, tons of rice, fatten you up. And then they get another big spoon and fucking tons of beans, tons of beans. 
farting you up, fatting you up, and then farting you up. And then, when it comes to the meat or the chicken, they get the smallest little spoon, and they just go drip, drip, drip. And what the fuck am I paying $15 for? A bowl of fucking, bur fucking beans and fucking rice? Fuck you, Chipotle. The ripoff. You're paying for rice and beans because they're hardly giving you anything to eat. Fuck you. Chipotle, suck my dick. And my ass. My pussy while I'm at it. Because I might be trans. I haven't decided. I might be non-binary. I'm still undecided. There's got to be a new demographic that's undecided. Because I haven't figured it out yet. You bitches. Non-binary doesn't count because those motherfuckers know they're confused. I don't know if I'm confused yet. That's all I'm saying. Cheers, La Tarte. Thank you for that ass. It sounds weird when I say that. Thank you for that ass. Oh, yeah. I'm going to say it to the next chick I fuck. Thank you for that ass, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's get going. Anthony Timmons. On Kevin Spacey reaches a new low, he says. You think him being a pedophile, he'd fit right in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? There has to be fucking uh, sacrificial lambs. Motherfuckers, you have to throw under the bus every once in a while. Like, oh shit, people are, are catching on to these conspiracies. They're actually starting to believe them. Here, let's just throw somebody under the bus. He's the one, everybody. Don't worry about the rest of us. That's really what it is. Just saying. Timmons, it's a front. Somebody's got to take the fall so the rest of them can continue with their fucking debaucherous lifestyles and shit. Cheers, Timmons. Thank you for commenting. Oh. Rocco, fuck my life, this Satanist. Let me hit it for him. Oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby. Rocco. Uh, on the podcast video, hashtag son of man out of context. Fuck you, Rocco. Uh, but let me show you what he fucking, what he wanted me to show you. Chi Chi Wong, Chi Chi Wong. They were saying, we're doing it wrong. We're doing it wrong, fellas. We're doing it wrong. Look at this uh, Italian or whatever the fuck she is, Aborigine. Fuck you, Rocco, son of a bitch. I don't know Japanese. I was trying my best, like wrong, Wong. That sounds like that could be wrong, could be Wong. Like if I was going to translate, that's what I would understand. Uh, I don't know. It's a hard language. Rocco, I don't, you don't even know Japanese, Rocco, fuck you. Anyways, he goes Chi Chi Wong, and he puts a bunch of laughing faces, cheers, hashtag. Live. I love you, Rocco. I'll tell you one thing on Rocco, Rocco came on this channel being a troll and a hater. He genuinely showed up on this channel talking shit. And making fun of me and he who should not be named. And this troll continued to do it week after week. And then he started making us laugh. And then we gave him a shirt. And now he's a woke packer, this son of a bitch. He genuinely, I don't think he ever even liked us to begin with. Now he does. And I think he does, you son of a bitch. You still show, unless you're just showing up to talk shit. <laughs> but he's a woke packer, motherfucker. Uh, I remember this guy ye ye since the first year. This guy was just talking shit. <laughs> to me, too, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of motherfuckers ganged up on he who should not be named. But this motherfucker specifically would fuck with me. I remember. Fuck you, Rocco. I love you. Cheers. He's a true, uh, he's a pillar of the channel. This guy, Indy and Gomer, they were the first motherfuckers. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's get let's get going with the comments.
Man, I can't believe it's been... This is year number four. Technically year number one for the broadcast. But year number four doing this live on YouTube. So time flies, man. It didn't just feels like it was yesterday. Uh, Rocco also says in the Kevin Spacey reaches a new low video, he says... Spacey's about to stop giving those BJ's away and start charging for them. LOL. Cheers, bros. Hashtag. Live. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Rocco. <laughs> He's about to start charging for blowjobs. Uh, nah, nah. This guy's too much of a deviant. He won't charge. He just wants to suck dick. That's okay. That's okay. I understand. Oh shit. This guy left a fucking book. Indie Phantom. It's been a while, but this motherfucker beat you. Indie Phantom used to live, leave books all the time for us to read. And this is a crazy one because this is on the Dudes Podcast Movies Retrospect. One Crazy Summer 1986. Ah, uh, that's from the when we used to do the podcast. We're doing a broadcast now with he who should not be named, and it pisses me off that people are still watching these. Not, nah, I mean, those videos are up there. It, there's a playlist that I. Th it's not on the main channel, but if you go to the to to our main channel and you go to playlists, there's playlists with the dudes podcast stuff on there. So you can watch the old stuff and see the difference and what it was. I think right before it ended, it was pretty much the same thing, except with another faggot on here on the on the left on the <laughs> on the left side and shit. <laughs> uh, but we used to do these movies retrospects, and it pisses me off. It honestly pissed me off that this guy left a fucking comment on this. Because I hate it. I hate it. Editing this. Number one, because it was he who should not be named's idea to do this. And I ended up doing it in the end. Fucker. Uh, but, god damn it. I hated editing these because it would take forever. Take me like three or four days to edit one of these. But, man. I always thought this was our best fucking stuff. This was the best of Son of Man and He Who Should Not Be Named. The retrospects was the best of it. Uh, so it pisses me off that I no longer do that shit. Uh, yeah. But anyways, let's read this guy's comment on the one crazy summer and ass. Oh my god. He says... Hold up. Yep, the movie's nuts. But I'm getting the impression your taste in movies sucks. Well, M Magic... Oh, this guy's name is Magic Carpet Ride Share Project, by the way. Uh, Magic Carpet Ride Share Project. Let me just advise you. I don't know. I doubt you're even watching, but... Advise you is that that's because we literally would watch shitty movies that were below 69% on the audience score in Rotten Tomatoes. So we only watch shitty movies, bro. That was the point of it. We would subjugate ourselves into watching ass. Anyways, he continues and says Savage, Steve Holland's 380 movies. Before he went off and did seemingly, seeming, seemingly only kids' entertainments were epic. The other, Better Off Dead, also with John Cusack as the lead, and How I Got Into College are both a ton of fun. I'm getting, I'm not saying they're the best comedies of all time, but they're a lot of fun. They're easy to rewatch too, and have a consistent fan following over the years. One Crazy Summer is currently free to stream on YouTube. I think this guy works for YouTube, fucker. I always thought Demi had a sexy voice and was sexy in general. I will agree with you. 
There's something sexy about a chick sounding like she could be someone's grandfather. At the same time looking like she's ready to fuck. That's to me more. She's pretty talented actress. Perhaps not a perfect career. Well, no, nah, it's pretty perfect, especially when she did, uh, what was that movie called? A uh, strip tease. Oh, yeah. No, was it strip tease? Yeah, it was strip tease. But still quite good. She had some good insight about the Brad Pack in the new documentary, Brats by Andrew McCarthy, which I don't know what this guy is advertising, but okay. She seems like an intelligent person and perspective despite her troubled past. Seems to have gotten beyond it. It sounds to me like this might be to me more right in this fucking comment. I'm just saying, but I'm going to continue reading this ass. And he continues, or she continues. Sexy woman, by the way. You can hit up the son of man any day. Oh, yeah. Anyways, that's my two cents, and I'm sure I wouldn't be the only one surprised to see her in one crazy summer trash so hard. It's not harming anyone, just saying to provide some laughs. I'm sure it'll lose your invite to the party next time. What fucking party are you talking about? Did anybody make sense of this per- I, I, I got a feeling this was Demi Moore. She was angry. She ran into this. She's like, what crazy summer? I was in this movie. And she saw the video and she doesn't understand what we were doing. Demi Moore. I love you. You're perfect. Yeah. I've seen your naked pictures from before you were famous in a movie star. You're perfect. So I'm gonna say, you didn't need that boo job. It helped a lot, but you didn't need it. Just gonna say it. Uh, anyways. Uh, <laughs> Magic Carpet Ride, thank you for commenting, you motherfucker. And leaving a fucking book. Cheers. So yeah, people are still watching their old retrospects. Fuck you. He who should not be named, you dick. We would have been famous already. You dumbass. Anyways. Oh, J Hart W. On the Billy Ray Cyrus gets divorced again. Son of a bitch. He puts a timestamp with faces laughing and he puts hashtag drunk Mexican karaoke. All right, let's hear what his asshole wants you to see. Don't tell my heart, my achy, breaky heart. I just don't think he'd understand. And if you tell my heart, my achy, breaky heart, he might just go and kill this man. Woo! Hey, fuck you, Jay Hartwell. That's like uncalled for, right? I don't have the auto tune on, and you don't hear the music in the background and shit. But everything was like perfect, like that, motherfucker. Everybody be dancing in the line and shit to it, motherfucker. You dick. You trying to expose me to the world? Son of a bitch. Anyways, cheers, Jay Hart. We love you, you motherfucker. We love you on this channel. Anyways, uh, oh, oh, here we go. What is this? One of these guys, uh, on the Jonathan Majors is making a comeback video. It's this guy named It's Chu. It's, I don't know if it's Chu or it's Cho. It might be Chu, it might be Cho. It's Chu. It's Cho. It's Chu. It's Cho. It's Chu. It's Cho. It's Chu. It's Cho. I don't know. <laughs> ah, anyways, he goes on, on the Jonathan Majors video. He goes, You not understanding why you don't have riches or women is hilarious. And he puts us a, a laughing face. Look at yourself. You're a grown man dressed like a fairy creature. Thank you. 
kind of what I was going for. I'm not wearing my wings right now because they're too big and they fuck up the sign back there that says woke pack for life in the background and shit so they're not ruining the aesthetics. I don't wear the full costume, motherfucker. But I was always trying to go for some kind of like uh, uh, Midsummer Night's Dream look. Ah, oh, yeah. It's chill, chill. Chew, chew, chew. Um... I was trying to understand why, because also, like I said, we, I'm, I'm fucking stoned as fuck. Thanks to these 5,000 milligram gummies. Aw, oh, yeah. And we're drinking tequila and shit on the show. So I don't even remember what this guy was talking about. I don't have riches or women. What are these talking about? I fuck bitches all the time. And as far as riches, well, man, this is Joe Biden's America. Ain't nobody rich. All right, even Cardi B's having a hard time paying her bills for all her family members because they're all freeloading off of her. Anyways, uh, so I went and watched the video, and I just, I don't even know why. I, I said something crazy comparing, like, why does this guy get everything and he beats women or some shit? Look, choo choo or cho cho. I know it's tough to understand or get distracted easily when you see a man. Looking this pretty. Oh, yeah. I know it distracts you. But I think you missed the point of the video. The whole point of the video was me trying to say that Jonathan Majors beat a woman and got guilty, convicted guilty for beating her. And all he has to do is go to therapy once a month for 15 minutes. Whereas if me and you, Choo Choo, or Cho Cho, if we beat a woman, we'd be in jail right now, you son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, this guy, man. I was kind of like, what the fuck, this guy? I was, I was, I didn't know if I was going to get angry or not, but then I saw his avatar and I said, man, this guy is legit. Look at this motherfucker. He's got diamond rings a diamond watch i don't even think that's a watch i think it looks like a watch but it's just covered in diamonds it doesn't even have a, a working thing to tell the time diamonds a fucking you know with, with a fucking white fucking do-rag and shit and those fucking pink glasses and ass it's like maybe this guy's a multi-millionaire and he's got the mink coat the white mink coat and shit yeah, yeah. And his baby girl's, his baby girl's fucking name and tattoo right there. So I was like, this guy fucking might be a millionaire. Cho-cho. And shit. Maybe he knows. An ass. I don't know. Cho-cho. Hit us up. We need some money. Some donations up in this bitch. This, uh, this is motherfucker. Look at the uh, body qua. Borena, a Mexicano, Dominicano. Oh, yeah, motherfucker. Give it up to the Browns or to this white Mexican over here. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> Fucking chocho. <laughs> all, right, all right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. The motherfucker. I don't know why some of these dumb motherfuckers over there from the islands come over with their nicknames thinking they're that's gonna be cool in America. <laughs> no, it's not, motherfucker. It sounds dumb as fuck. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Power Rangers on the video that Power Rangers is dead at Netflix. Anthony Timmons, he says, No big deal to me. I never was a Power Rangers fan. They would probably fuck it up anyways. By the way, it looks like the thumbs up button is gone this morning. I'll check again later. Oh! YouTube is sabotaging our channel, fellas? Are you fucking kidding me? So now people can't put a like on the fucking videos? For all we know, we could have gotten like thousands of likes already on the Jonathan Majors. Uh, is getting a fucking shit. Some ass. Timmons, let me know. 
If they're screwing around with us. God damn it. Nowadays, you gotta pay. YouTube, pay the money for you to fucking get famous and get views and clicks and come out and searches. Fuck you, YouTube. That's a bitches. Anthony Timmons knows what's going on. Anyways. Oh, and the Jonathan Majors is getting a comeback video. Ass R Bay. Ass R Bay. What? 4120. You almost had the right number. But you fucked up by putting that one there. You dumbass. Anyways, he says, Why are you online? Dot, dot, dot. Well, you gotta finish the question. Why are you online talking about Jonathan Majors? Why are you online being cool as fuck? Why are you online looking chick as fuck? Why are you online being a badass? Why are you online saying the facts? Why are you online and you're not famous yet? I mean, there's a lot of stuff you could be asking me here. Asar Bay. Uh, I'll leave it at that. Cheers. Thank you for commenting. You vague little bitch. Oh. Oh, he continues. And he puts another comment. This guy is high. Uh, yeah, but duh. You dumbass. You know what happens when you don't watch the underground broadcast? You come on here and you make an ass out of yourself, Assar Bay. It's already bad enough. Your name pretty much sounds like ass. Assar Bay. What is that saying? Like the ass of a baby? You pervert. You fucking shit. We're moving on. This motherfucker coming in here with his pedophilia and shit. They're not the kind of channel, Assar Bay. Son of a bitch. Anyways, the Kang and the Jonathan Majors viral video, another fucking comment. It's none other than this fucking misogynist women raper himself. No, ma'am. Let me hit it for this asshole. No, ma'am. National Organization of Men Against Amazonian Masterhood. And this son of a bitch goes... Once upon a time, white males used to get away with crimes all the time. The tables seem to have turned now. Cheers to the Browns. Cheers, son of man. Hashtag. Live. Yeah, this is the, the perfect time for my people to be here. If you're here illegally, if you're here and you're like a criminal and you rape women and, and children and ass like that, just move to one of these sanctuary states like uh, like Chicago or where these cities, Chicago, Washington, D.C., New York, Connecticut, uh, Los Angeles, California, pretty much all of California. These are havens for your debaucherous, criminalistic, perverted ways. So the, the new times, the times have changed in certain places. You just have to relocate. That's all. That's all. No man knows what he's talking about because he's uh, obviously a rapist. Anyway, cheers, no man. Thank you for commenting. Anyways, let's keep going. Rocco fuck my life on the Jonathan Majors video. He says, Holy shit. The J Major Sims are showing up, son. LOL. Hashtag. Uh, yeah, 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 we gotta go, we got a lot of the sympathizers showing up to defend their heroes, apparently, even though they don't want to say my hero, they say he's a hero to someone out there, not me, 
but I'm kind of sort of defending him. All right, all right. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, yeah, what happened here? Oh, there we go. It got stuck there. Damn. Damn, there's a lot of comments. Anyways, the next comment. Also in the Jonathan Majors video. Pablo UQ6TR. I don't know who the fuck that is. But he's got Token, the little black kid from South Park, as his avatar, this guy. He says, on the Jonathan Majors video. How dare he put his hands on a white woman? He's a true asshole. When he ran away, I was like, he's so guilty. Look, I'll just come out and say it, because I know we, uh, you know, we made fun of it a lot and shit. And <laughs> you know how we do when we do what it is that we do here. Uh, but my honest and final opinion about this is that this bitch was acting crazy. He tried to get out of the car and leave. She wanted to go follow him and be crazy. And for that brief instant, this calm, educated, well-mannered man fucking lost it. Just like any one of us would have. And he grabbed her, he picked her up, and it looked like he slammed her, but he really just picked her up because she weighs like 80 pounds. And he shoved her in the car. And when he shoved her in the car and went like that, he pulled her finger and broke it. And then pushed her like that and he ripped her, her ear back here. Total accident. He's just, get in the car and get away from me. And then he ran. Yeah. All I was saying is that, unfortunately, he did lay his hands on her, and then she did physically get hurt because he is larger and stronger than her. And just him shoving her in the car caused those injuries. It happened. It happened. It was not intentional, but it did happen. And he was guilty, and he was found guilty for it. And all he got was fucking counseling. Which is my beef with it. Because if any one of us, any one of you motherfuckers out there would have done that same thing, the same situation, you'd be in jail right now. The rest of us, all of us, probation, jail, an ankle lock, some shit where you can't do drugs because they piss test you every day and a half. This motherfucker, because he's fucking privileged and rich and, and famous, he gets off easy. That was my gripe about it. All right. When it comes down to it. Fuck this guy. I'm glad Marvel fired his ass. He should have gone to jail. I would have gone to jail. If I would have gone... When I look at a crime... And, and, and I see that if I did that crime... What would happen to me? It better happen to that motherfucker on TV. That's the way I do the judging. Is that like... Okay, if I did that crime... They better sentence him like this. The way they would sentence me. And it pisses me off when I see motherfuckers like, man, if I did that, fuck you. That's my shit, motherfuckers. Fuck y'all. Anyways, keep going. Oh. That <laughs> Some motherfucker on the Jonathan Majors also video. Some motherfucker named the greatest with two T's. 1208. You a clown. All right, you're like the one millionth person to say that. Non-original. Uh, I don't know how to think of anything funny. Also, what kind of lame son of a bitch puts his fucking name as the greatest? The greatest what? You dumbass, you're obviously not the greatest at punchlines, the greatest at leaving comments, the greatest at insults. What the fuck are you the greatest at? That is not the greatest picture either, motherfucker. You should have been like Chocho over here, who this motherfucker went to a professional and got his avatar fucking done. This motherfucker deserves our respect. 
I don't know about you, the greatest. Chacho over here looks like the greatest compared to your bitch ass. Did you take that with your old Nokia phone? Your flip phone and shit? Doesn't even have fucking, it's not even a touch phone and shit. Is that what you took it with? You do that. Anyways, we're gonna cheers to you for commenting. Cheers. <laughs> All right, all right. Anthony Timmons on the Danny McBride writing for DC says, Booster Gold, is that for real? I didn't know he was a real character. Anthony Timmons, yeah, Booster Gold is, uh, he's basically a, a, a fraud. He's a guy from the future. Who, who who reads about comic about superheroes in the past about Superman and Batman and all these people because in the future that shit doesn't exist anymore and everything's peaceful or whatever but he wants to be a superhero but since there's no crime or nothing he can't and so he builds a time machine and he takes all these gadgets with him from the future that are are normal in the future these gadgets are a normal thing everybody has them but he takes them back to the past and he uses these gadgets to like pretend he has powers like he's a superhero but he's not that's what he booster gold is holy shit anthony windham is here <laughs> Celebrating his first live show, he says uh, that he watches this every week. I appreciate you, motherfucker. I'm going to give you one more time a DJ horn, and I'll fucking give you the woke pack, too. You know what it is, motherfucker. Cheers, Windham. Roll it up, motherfucker. I've been taking those edibles all day. I can't be smoking no more. Mm. Oh. That fruit on the bottom. It's got tequila on it. I could taste it as I'm chewing it. All right, all right. Let's keep going with the comments. We might almost be done. I don't know. Maybe for a while. This is the longest comments. Thanks a lot, Jonathan Majors, you bitch ass. You and Ezra Miller, you criminals. You get us the most views on this channel. <laughs> Anyways. David Latarte on the Danny McBride writing for DC video. He says, Will this sound absolutely righteous? And he spells righteous like writing. And then he goes, I'll see myself out. Now that's a pretty good joke. That's a pretty good pun, you motherfucker. Ah, uh, yeah. You know what? I'm going to take this moment to complain and say fuck the English language. There's the perfect example of why I did, always did so bad in English, in, in fucking school, and grammar, and ass. The word right and the word right. That's right, motherfuckers. The word right, like in... You're absolutely right about that. Or the word write, like, are you going to write that down so you don't forget? Sound exactly the same, yet are spelled completely differently. Fuck you, grammar. Fuck you, English language. Fuck you. How dare you confuse the shit out of motherfuckers with bullshit like that. There's more ass. There's more ass. Tons of more examples. But that's one example that I fucking hate that shit. Right and right. Fuck you. There's one that... They're, they're said differently, but they're spelled the same. Live and live. Fuck you. Live and live are spelled exactly the same way, but are said two different ways. Fuck you. Isn't it the opposite of this, where two different words are spelled differently, but sound the same? Fuck you. And then they want kids to do good in school? Fuck you. You not even fucking, you can't even make up your own mind about how shit is called an ass. Dumbass. Anyways, I'm not here to bash on teachers or just the system in general. Thank you, David Latarte, and your righteous fucking response to that. 
Super Saiyan Joku on the space. This is Kevin Spacey, he's not at his lowest. He says, It's all an act. After the interview, he will start walking straight at the end. The usual suspects. Oh, yeah, yeah. The cigarette. And he's just like nothing. Oh, yeah. He was he was Kaiser Sosa. Oh, that was badass. Anyways. I eat losers like him. And I make sure to spit out the bones. Meow. Oh. Does he know a pissy can be stretched and stapled up. Oh, stop crying, Spacey. We live in real life, and that's broke as fuck. Cheers, more flowers. Hashtag. Those rich, privileged motherfuckers. Like I told you, the only reason why he's broke is because the motherfucker wants to live a lavish lifestyle and shit. I swear, the minute. We fucking get signed for four hundred million dollars. We're still gonna live in this shitty apartment. Oh yeah, so we're gonna drive the same shitty car and shit. Yeah, that's right, motherfuckers. And we're still buying the great value shit from the store. I ain't spending my shit. I gotta save it for the taxes, cause Joe Biden's gonna charge me an arm and a leg for the taxes. You pieces of shit. We get him out of the White House to get a Republic up in there. That's all I'm saying. More money in our pockets. Cheers, Joku. Oh, let me make sure this is the last one. And it is the last common, always wanting, having to have the last word of the day. None other than Houston, Texas, son Jose Trevino. Houston, Texas. Eh, soy americano, mexicano, señor. Para que usted se cuadre, ¿ok? <laughs> Envidia, puto. <laughs> Cheers, Joe Trevino, you crazy motherfucker. Oh, shit. That's almost the end of it. All right, I'll chuck this at the end. It's just the end and the cherry. Well, not a cherry. It's a whole strawberry. Oh, yeah. Jose Trevino says, Hey, son. This is a brilliant move by Jimmy Gunn. He's talking about the Danny McBride is writing for DC. Danny McBride is funny, awesome writer. Have you seen Vice Principals or Eastbound and Down? I've never, never heard of or seen Vice Principals. It's the first time I've ever even heard of that. Eastbound and Down, yes, I've definitely seen that. And it is hilarious as fuck. I'll never forget where I saw that. <laughs> Too and shit. Oh my god, this was so long ago. There was some... Oh my god, it was in some apartment I lived in in some other city. And this fucking chick saw me walking, smoking down the apartments. And she said, hey, you want to come hang out? And I got weed too. And I said, well, yeah, she had these big titties. So I went and we went into her room and we were just smoking. And I was like, this is cool. And then uh, this chick, I guess she was trying to turn me on or something. So she was like, I'm going to just try out some outfits or whatever. You're cool. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she goes, you want to watch TV? And she goes, I got Eastbound and Down on DVD. And I'm like, what is that? And she goes, oh, I'll play them. And she played them. And, uh, and man, I was hooked. Like, this chick was over there trying bras on and shit, and I was not even paying attention to her. <laughs> she fucked up. She realized I should have never have put that shit on for him. Because I, I had a low attention span. I forgot about her. And I just, like, well, I was just high, and I just watched it eastbound and down. But on my favorite episode, and I'll never forget this was the one where this son of a bitch t goes to the school dance and takes some fucking ecstasy 
Oh my god, and then like, oh, this fucking guy is just like w walking around dancing and shit like, and he thinks the other chick's all into it, but it's all in his head, and I'm like, this guy's fucking nuts, bro. The cunt says that Vice Principles is awesome. Uh, Walt Goggins should be a southern jo jocket. Uh, I gotta check out this Vice Principles. I've never heard. I know that The Righteous. I don't know if Danny McBride is writing on The Righteous. I don't know what it's called, The Righteousness. Uh, but, but yeah, I've heard of that. I've only seen Eastbound and Down. I mean, I I think I watched the whole season at that chick's fucking house. Like, I know, I know she wanted me to fuck her, but I just, like, man, I was... I was really high, and then, like, she put this thing on for me, and I just didn't give a fuck about her anymore. <laughs> I watched the whole season there, and she was just there, like, kind of, I could tell she was kind of mad. <laughs> uh, good times, good times. That's right, bitch. I'm not that easy. <laughs> I only fuck who I want. <laughs> uh, cheers. I'm chugging this. This is the last, the cherry on top. This is all soaked in tequila for like a while already. Oh my god. That's it for the comments. Thank you very much for commenting, you sons of bitches. We went an hour on just the fucking comments. You motherfuckers. Uh, that's uh, again. Thank you all. You you make the show with the comments. You always do. I always say that, and that's the truth. Appreciate you all for commenting and all that ass. Uh, but we're done with the comments. Cheers to that. All right, cheers, y'all. We got a good buzz going on. Those gummies are. I'm definitely feeling it. Oh yeah. Uh, but let's just get this shit, like I said, let's get this shit on the road. And we're going to start off with the weekly pop culture breakdown. And uh, this week... Man, and I swear to God, I used to say this all the time when we did the podcast back in the day. But I used to say it all the time. When this happens, it comes in three, in weeks of three. And last week, it wasn't on the pop culture, but I put it on the... I put it on the fucking... Uh, on the comic book stuff. And I'm sorry, this is really distracting. So there. I had to stop it. But we have, unfortunately, another downer to start the show off with. Donald Sutherland, the great Donald Sutherland, father to Keith or Sutherland, passed away at the age of 88 from an undisclosed long-time illness he has been, unfortunately, been living with. Probably some kind of cancer, rectal, stomach, lung, brain, eyes, I don't know. Cancer does get everywhere, everywhere. Breast, everywhere. All over the place. Uh, 88, man. What a lucky son of a bitch. You know, I'm fucking just doing everything I possibly can to make it five more years. This motherfucker made it to 88. That's fucking badass is all I'm going to say. Not only that, but this motherfucker's a legend. He's been in so many fucking uh, movies. So many fucking movies. Uh, I can't even name any of them because, uh, you know, I'm too fucking out of it right now. But I know I've seen him in some recently, and I've seen him in some in the past. I know he's been in a lot. Uh, and he's always been good. Uh, whatever role he, he's gotten. Um, I think it's a good life. 88. 88. Uh, I should be proud. And there's nothing to be sad about. Like when, when someone dies at the age of 88. There's nothing to be sad about. There's just more celebrating that the motherfucker got to live for that long. Uh, is all I gotta say. 
Uh, yeah, rest in peace. He uh, now knows everything and understands everything. Uh, and he's better for it. And uh, he doesn't miss any of us or any of you. But that's fine. Uh, that's just the way it is when you die. Uh, good for him. Good for him. Um, 88. He lived a long life. You know. Like I said, I just... I'm just trying to chill on for the next five years. If I can make it that far. We'll see. Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Kelly's Heroes. Don't look now. Clute. The man was a legend. Anthony Timmons says... Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 I don't know if I've seen any of those. Uh, I've seen some where he's been in it. I just don't remember. Uh, but yeah. You know. He'll he'll live, he'll, you know, in the memories of people for what he, he achieved. But to me, his greatest achievement is you, you'll live till you're 88. You know. That's all I gotta say. Cheers to him. All right. Well, last week and King George played for the first time at A&M Kyle Field here in Texas. Land of the uh, home of the brave and the land of the free and all that ass. And, uh, and everyone showed up literally. He officially broke the record for the most people at a fucking concert, gathering, sports, show, arena, anything in America. 110,000 people showing up. 110,905. He was so close to make it to 111,000. That's the most people have ever ever gathered in America to see anything not even the Super Bowl the old record was actually at the same stadium and it was by a and m versus old Mississippi and uh, it was still about a hundred a hundred thousand people less than this I mean how much was the ticket way in the fucking top I bet you that ticket way in the top was still about 150 bucks. Fucking shit. To to barely see him and barely hear him because I'm sure the wind because the, the sound goes everywhere in the wind and you really don't really you kind of sort of hear but not really. Damn, bro. I mean, I wouldn't go to something like this unless I was right there in the front. Because, I mean, why the fuck do you want to pay? And it must have taken forever. Forever. To everyone to get out of the arena. To go to the bathroom. To get something to eat or drink. I mean, if I was there, I would probably be pissing into fucking piss jugs or bottles or whatever not to get up because it takes forever well, I'm at the top I have to walk five feet of stairs and then take two turns and a left turn sideways to go to the bathroom and then make a line by the time I get back fucking 45 minutes just went by and shit ah uh. Congratulations to fucking George Strait, but that's not something I would ever go do. Hey, look at this old man still chugging away. Uh, I don't know if he still sounds as good. I know, yeah, those are some of the best voice recordings ever. Uh, next to, what's his name from Brooks and Dunn? Uh, whatever the fuck that guy's name is. That guy's an awesome voice, too. He's a nice and deep voice. This motherfucker had a good voice, too. Um, but damn, look at that hot bitch back there in the, in the black. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's down to fuck this old man. All right, cheers to King George. Cheers to King George. We're done with this ass. Old man. Uh, speaking of old man, 
63 year old man the billy ray cyrus divorce saga continues we are currently at the he did this she did this phase of it all but fortunately billy ray is now asking the judge uh for an emergency motion y'all please stop her from using my money stop her from having access to my bank accounts and credit cards and my paypals my bitcoin wallet she's using it all she says already in the past few days since i divorced her or kicked her out of the house because they're not divorced yet says she has spent ninety six thousand dollars nine hundred and eighty six ninety six thousand nine hundred and eighty six thousand dollars she says on 37 charges and on my business account and then she even spent another seventy thousand dollars on legal fees to paying her attorney out of my wallet and shit. Well, her attorney rebuttaled to the judge and said, hey, we're still going to court. So the law says technically they're not divorced yet until the court is over. They're still married. And while they are married, the wife has access, full access to all of his financial uh, accounts and shit to his finances she has right she's are still married so it's she has access to the money she's gonna bleed him dry before they're divorced <laughs> oh my god poor billy ray cyrus this is what happens when you marry someone who's half your fucking age you rob zombie dirty looking motherfucker you dumbass my god She's coming out now, and she is actually trying to get some sympathy. And she is saying that literally the day before she was going to go and have surgery to have a double mastectomy, because apparently they found that she was born with some kind of fucking gene uh, in her family, and the gene is prone to having breast cancer. All right. She's come out and said that he knew this from the beginning before they got married. That this was an issue and that she was scheduled for a surgery. Well, the day before she was about to get the surgery, he fucking hit her with the divorce papers and kicked her out of the house. The day before she's going to go into surgery, bro. And now he's claiming fraud and say, this bitch lied to me and this whole time she only got with me because she wanted to get her breasts removed and the surgery was going to be expensive and shit. And so that's why she married me for the money. And then even after I kicked her out, she's still using my credit cards and paying for all this ass that I don't approve of. He is saying. Oh, my God. There is a lesson to be learned here, fellas. When you are rich and famous and have a lot of money, when you make more than $20,000 a year, I'm still praying to God one of these days. Come on, sign this channel for $400 million. Scraping the bottoms for anything to eat. We're bottom feeders. That's what we are. But not this dirty looking Rob Zombie motherfucker. This privileged fuck. Well, now nah, he's not privileged. He just made that one badass song. But not this guy. No, 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 no. This guy's problem is the young hussy. Half his age. When you're rich, powerful, and famous, you never, never remarry. If you're if you're not married, then you don't get married ever, you idiots. And if you do, you get a prenup, J Lo, Affleck, you dumbass. Uh, but yeah, you don't get married. You just fucked a bitch.
You want to live with me? You can live with me, but not in the state of Texas, because the state of Texas will fuck you over. After seven months, she's legally your wife. Fuck you. You want to go live together? All right, we'll move over there to Arizona or some ass. You know, some non-democratic non city where people still believe in values and don't like molestation of children uh, and shit. Like, just don't marry a younger woman when you have money, you idiots. That's what I'm trying to get at, for fuck's sakes. God damn it. What is wrong with you idiots? Don't be marrying young women. You fuck them and you leave them. That's all you do. You dumbass. Cheers to none of this. It's just because my, my mouth is a little dry. Anyways, oh my god, fellas, just a day or two ago, Justin Timberlake got arrested for drunk driving. Oh my god. I'm bringing sexy back. You, the motherfuckers don't know how to act. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm bringing sex back. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. That fucking CD was the shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, here's the lowdown from my witnesses that actually saw him first drinking at a hotel bar, chilling and shit. The hotel manager, they interviewed him and he said he was a nice young man. Beautiful blue eyes, and he was kind to everybody, and was was uh, really rich, and he tipped us all really good. He was not loud or obnoxious, and he didn't try to rap or freestyle. He said he was just a normal, white, good, clean, fun kind of guy. I don't know why he got arrested. We did not overserve him, is what the guy was saying. Well, the eyewitnesses around there were saying this guy was drunk as fuck, being loud and shit at the bar. And even worse, when they cut him off at the bar because he was obnoxiously drunk, somebody got up and went to the bathroom. And when that person got up, he quickly grabbed their beer and chugged it. And somebody else got up and he grabbed their drink and was drinking it. So he was stealing drinks and shit because they didn't want to serve him anymore. So he started stealing from people. And that since he was famous and everybody was there, they're all like, Hey, Justin, you just took my drink. And then everybody would laugh. Oh, that's so funny. And then he would keep on drinking and shit. Uh, and so then when he left... He ran a red light and then swerved into another lane because this guy was taking long and the cop pulled him over and the cop pulled him over and they, they, he asked him, are you drunk? And Justin said, no, sir, I was at the hotel with my friends, my white privileged friends, rich friends from Beverly Hills. And I had one cocktail. Uh, this, this fucking old man in front of me. He was taking too long and the light turned yellow and then before he knew it, it was almost at red and so I took off and then I almost hit him so I swerved into the other lane to get away from him, sir. And the cop says, I don't buy it. B booked him and took him in. Fuck you, cop. That exact same thing happened to me when I was drunk on my birthday. And I was really drunk too. Uh, there's an old man there, like, fucking taking forever. The light was green, and I honked at him. Motherfucker, go already, you son of a bitch. And then he went, and it turned yellow. And I'm like, fuck you. And so then I revved it as it turned red, and I went around him, swerving into the other lane, and the cop pulled me over. The same scenario that happened to JT. The same thing happened to me. I understand him. I would have safely gotten home drunk without any incident or altercation had it not been for the old man and then that'd be for JT for what happened to him. So I understand him. I don't blame him for what's going on here. This is bullshit. 
If you ask me, he would have gotten home okay. This motherfucker, he's been drinking since he was 15 years old within sync. You don't think this guy knows how to drive home after a couple of beers, you motherfuckers? Fuck you. This is Justin Timberlake. He used to date Britney Spears, pop ecstasies, get her pregnant, then give her some shit to have an abortion while he plays guitar in the bathroom. Of course, he knows how to drive home drunk and shit. The real question is, where the fuck was Jessica Alba? Her sexy fine ass. This guy fucking nabbed her right away. Lucky son of a bitch. She's very masculine. I kind of like that. I kind of like that. I'm not going to lie. Um, Man, this pretty boy, man. Only this motherfucker can, can make getting arrested look this good. No, no. Look at him. Just walking there with his Nikes, so light blue there, and his light blue jeans and shit. And, oh, yeah. Nice little haircut. His blue eyes. Pretty boy, motherfucker. Look at him. Ain't nothing gonna happen to this pussy. That's all I'm gonna say. You gotta love this guy. You gotta love this guy. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, a lot of people were talking shit, saying that he should go to jail and he's privileged. Hey, fuck you, Jonathan Majors beat a white woman. He got away with it. This motherfucker should be able to run a red light and swerve into another lane, drunk, and get away with it. That's all I'm gonna say. But we do have trolls all over. You know? There's trolls all over. What are you going to do? <sighs> There's trolls in Hollywood. And someone decided to troll Justin Timberlake. And no, my friends, it was not 50 Cent. Our usual troll here. The motherfucker's always on it. They're ready to troll somebody on the internet. No! It was none other than crazy Britney Spears. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Britney puts a fucking picture of a cocktail that she's drinking at home. Or she made it by herself, I think. I don't know. There's some dead butterfly inside of it. Poor girl. And she puts, it's the little things you know, flower, flower. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Britney. We love you. <laughs> Fucking Britney trolling Justin. Oh, it was just one cocktail officer. She's all like, nah, he's a drunk. He used to drunk fuck me all the time. <laughs> Oh my god. Alright, alright. Alright, Brittany. That's enough of your trolling ways. You crazy motherfucker. And Justin, don't worry about it, motherfucker. This is only gonna make you cooler. You need to make an album now. And the album's all about you busting out of jail. And being a badass gangster. Have motherfuckers like Kendrick Lamar in it. They not like us. They not like us. Now, don't have Drake. Nobody wants to see Drake in your video anymore, Justin Timberlake. You don't want no pedophiles in your video. All right, cheers, Justin. We love you. Uh, let's move on to more celebrities. And they're going to some superhero celebrities because none other than Sir Ian McKellen has gone back to his roots in the theater. And uh, he's playing some drunken old man who befriends some black people and shit. Some British black people. And, uh, and man, this motherfucker. I don't know if he did this for the row. Or if this is just him. But this motherfucker has uh, had some kind of body transformation. Uh, ever since he he stopped being Magneto. God damn it. This used to be Magnus. Magnus. Magneto. Look at him now. No wonder we haven't seen him in the MCU. Uh, Kevin Feige's all like, I'm not going to pay the VFX guys to shrink this guy's body down. Fuck no. Let's just not have his ass at all. And that's what's going on. Oh my god. But unfortunately something did happen to this guy because he's back on stage. I said being a thespian with nothing wrong with that. Alright. Plenty of I respect thespians. 
motherfuckers. And y'all better respect them too. Anyways. At the end of a thespian production, they all go up there and they bow and shit. And then the main motherfucker goes up there alone and, and everybody bows and then they clap and shit. And Sir Ian McKellen did the same thing. He went up there. And uh, and then and they kind of like told him to go up there by himself. And he went up to the edge. And he looked up at the bright lights. Everybody was clapping. And he got a little bit deoriented or whatever you want to call it. He got confused. He kind of felt like Joe Biden. And the motherfucker fell forward. And he screamed, help. And he fell off the stage and broke his fucking uh, his wrist. Because he tried to go stop like that and his fucking wrist fell. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? They're like an 80 something year old man. And these motherfuckers walk him up to the, to the edge. He goes, sir. Start pushing him. Get over there. Everybody's all jealous because he outperformed the shit out of the fucking play. Better than all you amateur motherfuckers. And you want to fucking go over here and send this man to his death. Fuck you. This should have never had happened. It's bullshit. This guy's a knight. Sir Elaine McKellen. Shit. Motherfucker should have been arrested for letting him go all the way to the edge. Would you let your grandfather or your grandmother... Go up to the edge of something like that. That's at least four or five feet down, motherfuckers. For an elderly person, that's dangerous, you idiot. Oh, motherfuckers, that's the stupidest thing ever. They're lucky he didn't die. That all he did was break his fucking wrist. Because falling forward like that from this... Look at this fragile, fat old man. Imagine, he fell right on his head, that's it, his neck breaks, and he's dead, and shit. The motherfuckers are lucky that all he did was break his wrist. If I was Ian McKellen, I'd be suing the shit out of that guy right there behind me, that guy with the beard, that looking motherfucker right there. I'm suing the shit out of you for fucking not even telling me, come back here, sir, don't, don't get too close. In fact, that Mexican there next to him too is getting sued. Fuck you both. You all did this to me, you jealous sons of bitches. It was a setup. You did this all along. That's all I'm saying. Fuck you. Ian McKellen, I'm sorry you fell and I'm glad you're not dead. It would have been a tragedy. And it would have pissed me the fuck off. <sighs> but then we are talking about... The Marvel stars and the Marvel super ass and all this ass and shit and blah, 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 blah. Jonathan Majors is making a comeback. I've told you all he's coming back and shit. He's going to get an award for beating women and persevering and inspiring young black men to do the same. Follow the same examples that he does. Hit on black, white women. You'll get away with it. You won't go to jail. As long as you go to counseling and say you respect and women are powerful. No, that ass. 15 minutes once a month. That's what he got. Privileged Hollywood. When you go to Ivy League schools and in the theater department, you get privileged shit. You know, you get special privileges. What are you going to do? Anyways. He's making a comeback, folks. And he has gotten his first major picture row. Ever since his controversial actions of beating on a poor defensive woman. And uh, yes, it's a movie where he will play the main character. And the movie is called Merciless. I think. Yeah, Merciless. And uh, the plot is mysterious and shit. But it sounds to me like he's going to play some fucking guy who shows no mercy when he beats down on a white woman. It just sounds like it. I don't know. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I could be very wrong. Uh, but, I mean, I don't know if I had been convicted 
of beating a white woman. I've already said this in the comments. I would be in jail right now. Let it be known as a fact. But if I was Jonathan Majors and I had gotten convicted from beating a white woman, obviously I am not in jail. And I'm just going to counseling once a month for 15 minutes. But one thing I would, you know, and that's a good thing for him, for him, for him. And if I was him in my situation, you know, then that'd be a good thing for me too. I'm not going to lie. If the, the shoes, if I'm in his shoes, I'm happy that I got counseling. You know, fuck you all. Uh, but what I most definitely wouldn't do is accept the first row in the comeback movie to revitalize my career to be a movie called Merciless. Some guy who shows no mercy to people he beats on. Rapes or molests. Or some ass. This guy's an idiot. He's got the wrong PR people. The wrong agents. I mean, just even him doing that Good Morning America interview was one of the stupidest things in the world because it only made him look more like a jackass than it did not make him look innocent. It almost made him look like, 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 dude, you know you're guilty and you're denying it, you idiot. Like, he did, like, a fucking stupid. They made him look like an ass. Uh, and he's just doing this to himself. He's just doing this to himself. And I don't know why, like I said, if I was him, I wouldn't have chosen to make my comeback in the movie called Merciless. Maybe a movie called Forgive Me. Or I'm Innocent. Some shit like that, but you really want to be, you might as well start in a movie that says I beat women. You dumbass. Merciless. Fucking dumb son of a bitch. You're fucking up, you idiot. No one likes you anymore. No one's going to watch Kang the Conqueror. You're fired. They're going to have to replace you with some other black guy who's probably better than you. And you got to fuck up. All because you wanted to date a young, white, half your age, half your size woman. You dumbass. Uh, anyways. We're moving on. Cheers to y'all. Uh, but we can't finish the weekly pop culture breakdown without talking about Super Saiyan Joku's favorite subject and mine. The Yeze! <laughs> and uh, we all know it was Father's Day last weekend. And uh, Yeze, he didn't get any Father's Day cards. And he didn't get any phone calls from any of his kids. Happy Father's Day or nothing. That's horrible. Especially since he goes to everything for their kids. Uh, somebody suspects that Kim, Kim is not teaching the kids about Father's Day. That's the one holiday they don't celebrate, they don't mention, they they cut it out of the calendar so the kids, you know, because in the calendar it, 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 it says the holidays, you know, and they just cut it out. Or they draw a picture of a little house with a cat you know, over, over the or it says Father's Day, they draw stuff over it. So the kids don't even know there's such a thing as Father's Day. Poor Yeze. That's how bad he's got it. They're, they're against him. The whole fucking clan. The KKKs. Oh, poor guy. But it's alright, because Yeezy's not going to let stuff like that keep him down. He says, it's alright, my kids love me. They they may not know that Father's Day exists because of my wife, ex-wife, being a bitch. Not teaching them. But it's okay. Because Yeezy and his wife, like we said, had arrived in Japan last week. They were parading around there. But on Father's Day, Yeze decided to pop up in a Japanese wrestling promotion. 
and did a concert oh yeah a surprise concert and by concert i mean uh it was a recording playing in the background with the az just dancing up there per you know kind of just you know watch me move around while my song plays in the background and shit uh which is pretty much the way he does concerts nowadays he no longer even this is a yay concert nowadays if, if you've seen them lately he doesn't even have a microphone He's just dancing and there's a recording in the background. Um, I would not pay for this. But this was a surprise. People were there to see a wrestling. This is a, a small wrestling promotion. They were there to see a wrestling and Yeze was there watching the wrestling. And he said, hey, you're going to take a break? Let me go up there and do my, my song. And they said, okay. And he did. And all the Japanese went crazy for him. That's fucking badass. Yeze. Um... So, yeah, he was not going to let it, you know, tear him down that nobody remembered him on Father's Day. None of his four kids or his ex-wife and shit. And so, uh, Cam saw this, said, fuck this guy. I'm going to remind him what it is he's missing out on. I think he's dancing over there, grabbing his crotch for these Japanese. And Kim hit back and posted a video. Of Saint, yay son, playing basketball. And this kid's completely dominating all these rich, white, privileged Beverly Hills kids. He's probably the only black kid in the whole school. Look at this shit, motherfucker. Three-pointer. Look at that. Oh, spin. Oh, layup. Like nothing. Didn't even look to where he threw the ball. Look at that. Fucking back behind the fucking head. Three-pointer. Man, I can tell you, man, all of Ye's kids, all of them are going to be good at something. And I mean really good at something. And they're not all going to be rappers. This kid right here, this is right here, this is the next fucking, this is the next basketball guy right here. Look at this guy. He's completely dominating. That's pretty good for this kid at his age to be playing like this. This is really good. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, so fuck you, Kim Kardashian, trying to use the kids against Kanye. Kanye goes to their games, you bitch. We see him all the time. He was just in vacation with his wife, his hotter wife in Japan, you bitch. You know, it's it's your fault for not teaching your kids about Father's Day, son of a bitch. It's not, not Ye's fault. Ye's the one taking the heat for this. But if you ask me, this all talent, because... This all talent right here. This all came out of Ye's sperm. That's all I'm going to say. This all came out of Ye's sperm, baby. Talent. Pure talent. Gold right there. Multi-millionaire. Future multi-millionaire right there. 400 millionaire. Without his daddy's or mom's help. All he's going to need is some good Reebok sneakers. Oh, yeah. Some Ye's. Cheers. <laughs> All right, all right. Let's move on to what Super Saiyan Joku wants me to move on to. All right, but yay. After they left Japan, yay and his wife, Bianca Sensori, half his age, uh, no plastic surgery, all natural, decided to go to Paris. And Bianca Sensori uh, displayed, you know, her fucking brand new hair, uh, pink hair extensions. She's got the wet look going on and her tan leotard with uh tan boots and yeezy did his assassin's creed again this time covered with his face mask and shit and uh i think i don't know i might be mistaken but it looks like she might not be wearing a bra i might be wrong but let's just make sure and have a look <sighs> yeah, she's not wearing a bra. I can definitely tell she's not wearing a bra. Those are very, very large areolas. God bless her. God bless you, AZ. Uh, of course, uh, we got a good shot of uh, the back shot, as they say. And actually, this is not the best looking back shot of hers there's ever been. I don't know if it's the lighting or the angle. 
Uh, not the best looking one, but I will say one thing. This is very, very inspiring, uh, reminiscing of uh, Fifth Element. It's got a lot. Of, now I see it, the pink hair, the wet looking hair, and then this outfit. This is very Fifth Element, uh, very multi-pass, multi-pass and shit. Uh, inspired is what I think she was going for. Uh, it looks good. This looks good. Uh, they went to a fashion show. Here, here it is. All of this, all in action for you all. Uh, she, she is bouncing up and down. Yeah, she sits next to this fucking giant of a guy. This guy's like fucking huge. This Serbian guy. Look at his hands. He's like a giant. Um. And he's kind of sitting like a homosexual, but you know, I mean, you know, he might not be. That's just the way they, they sit over there. Uh, imagine this guy, Yeezy, is gonna, like he said hi to him right there, what's up, motherfucker? And uh, Yeezy is gonna take this guy with his wife home and, and have him fuck his wife in front of him. Fucking yay. He's, that guy's big enough for sure. I mean... If you were going to have someone fuck your wife, it definitely had to be that guy. Because that, the other guy sitting next to Ye, man, that Puerto Rican motherfucker. I mean, why you want to see that guy fuck your bitch? That's all I want to say. He's a big Serbian guy. He's humongous. He reminds me of Vinnie Jones, that fucking guy. Uh, what was his name? Bullet Tooth Tony or Bulletproof Tony or whatever? No, no, that wasn't Bulletproof Tony. I forget what this fucker's name was. I forget what his name was in that movie. Snatch. <laughs> Anyways. Yeze living the lifestyle with his fucking uh, half naked wife. <laughs> half his age and shit. Bare naked ass. Wet hair. Assassin's Creed. Cover my face. Cheers, yay! I love your lifestyle. <laughs> One of these days, motherfuckers, you're going to see this same video like that. Ye and his wife, and then they sit down, and the person that's here next to him that, hu that hugs, it's going to be me. He's going to be son of man with, <laughs> with, a, with a makeup on. Like, oh, what's up, Ye? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cheers, motherfucker. <laughs> all right, all right. We're done with the fashion show. And ass. And, uh, and Yeze, we're done with you, you two. I'm sorry. You're cut off. Cheers. To the pop culture breakdown. Because that's the end of it, in case you didn't realize it. All right. That's it for the pop culture news breakdown. Let's get into it. What you've all been waiting for. The weekly comic book nerd shit. Oh, yeah. Let's get into it. And what did I fucking tell you guys a few weeks ago? This was gonna happen. And it's officially started. The popcorn wars have arrived. And Despicable Me 4 is the next movie to make one of these asses. We already saw the fucking Dune one started it. They made the fucking uh, the Deadpool one that's going to come out soon. And now they're going to have this Despicable Me bullshit. And it's some kind of like baby holder that you hold. You put on like a backpack but in front of your chest. It has a little fucking shit for your popcorn and little shit for like, like, like snacks and ass. And it's got the tie or the scarf that Gru wears. And this can either be for children or for adults. But you know what? When it comes down to it, here we go. 
You're about to spend another 50 fucking dollars on a plastic piece of shit that doesn't even hold that much popcorn when you look at it. It holds about like this much popcorn, which you're going to be done with it right away or your kid's going to end up spilling it on the side. So you're going to have to be fucking stop from enjoying the movie and the kid's crying and all this ass to take this half-ass piece of shit back to the concession stand and ask them to refill it with popcorn only for them to tell you that that's gonna be another 750 to just to refill it i already paid 50 bucks for this well, i'm sorry sir you should have slowed down eating your popcorn it's another 750 dollars uh, if you want to fucking get a refill you get a refill, you're fucking pissed off because you already spent $150 on just the tickets for you and your family, and now you gotta spend $50 for this piece of shit, $57 with a refill for each fucking kit, by the way. And your wife wants one because it's cute and pretty and you got to get it for her too and ass. And then one week from now, you're going to find this piece of ass half broken, chewed up by the dog and being pissed on by the cat right there in the living room floor and you're just gonna end up throwing it away to the trash so they can haul that piece of ass, that $50 piece of plastic piece of shit that is non-biodegradable by the way, haul it off to some landfill where it can just accumulate and cause more destruction to this earth and bring humanity closer to extinction. Thank you very much. Your fucking popcorn is destroying the world! Fuck you! And your movies and your popcorn holders and all this bitch ass ass. I never, I never, I, I haven't been to the theaters in a long time. And even back then when I went, fuck that. I would take in my snacks and my soda. I would wear baggy jeans and I'd just wear everything. i pull out a soda, a can, and start sipping and put on my chips and Cheetos and all that ass. I ain't fucking paying for dick in this place. That's the way I would always say it. I don't give a fuck. It's already paying $20 for a ticket. Fuck you for a movie that doesn't even have good special effects. and shit. Fuck you, Marvel and Disney. Anyways, the popcorn wars are here. Expect to pay 40, 50 bucks for these pieces of shit every time you go see a different movie. All right, we're moving on from this asshole. Because we just got some semi exciting news. And by semi, it's because space balls. Oh, yeah. This is a badass movie, by the way. One of the best Jewish created fucking things ever since George Lucas made some ass. Spaceballs is getting a sequel finally. After 30 years, it's finally getting a sequel. And it's going to star none other than that Jewish son of a bitch, Josh Gad. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, I don't think they're getting Rick Moranis. Rick, Rick Moranis left Hollywood a long time ago. He says, I am done with the satanic blood orgies and the child molestations. I want no part of it anymore, you puff daddy. Stop inviting me to your orgies. I am not going to these ecstasy-filled raping parties. I don't want any part of it. And he left Hollywood a long time ago. That's the truth. Uh, oh shit, Brian the World, you fucking pumpkin patch motherfucker is here. Chair! <laughs> there is one hope, because I personally, I don't like Josh Gat. I think the only reason he's fucking rich and famous is because he's Jewish. But what can I say? That's pretty much the reason why most Jewish people are rich and famous. Let's be honest. Uh... But I don't like Josh Gat and shit, but I will say one thing that is promising about this is that producing and also helping write will be none other than Mel Brooks himself, who's still kicking it alive, motherfuckers. Can you believe that? Mel Brooks. That's promising. That's like one of the few 
Jewish people I respect. You know what I'm saying? Because they ain't a lot. Well, let's be honest. Free Palestine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cheers! This sounds like good, but it also sounds bad because the same thing. And it's like, why are you going to touch something that's already good without being tainted by your ass? It's the same shit. The Hollywood's no longer original. Fuck you, Josh Gad. I don't give a shit if you grew up watching Spaceballs. You leave it alone, piece of shit. You motherfucker. That's all I'm going to say. 97 years old. Brian is saying that Mel Brooks is 97. Holy fuck. Can he even see? God damn it. I hope he's, he's able to see. Maybe he thinks that when he was speaking to Josh Gatt, who came to pitch him the movie for the sequel, maybe he thought it was Rick Moranis because he can't see that well. God damn it. Somebody better tell him this is not the, this is the wrong fucking short guy with glasses. And shit. Fuck you, Josh Gat. Be fucking shit up. I don't know. Like I said, this might be good, but it also might be bad and ass just because they're trying to do shit that's already been done. Don't fuck it up. The worst thing you could do for any movie is to do a sequel when more than five years has gone by. Just drop it. You don't need to do another one. You're fucking it up. We're moving on. Because out of nowhere, they finally announced that Megalopolis, Francis Coppola's fucking masterpiece, has finally found someone to distribute it. And it's none other than Lionsgate. And they're going to fucking show this movie in theaters on September 27th. This movie is going to be amazing. It's going to be a complete fucking failure in the theaters i'm not gonna lie but it's gonna be amazing this movie looks fucking sexy and horny and homosexual as fuck look at shia labeouf there look how fucking woke he looks and it's all greek and shit and there's gonna be orgies and sex and futuristic kind of like like uh what's that movie called uh uh blade runner a Blade Runner with like Roman and shit. This looks good. I don't know if that's Florence Pugh. I don't think it is, but I don't know. It might be. She likes showing her tits, so you know. I I actually am very very fucking excited for this film, and I'm actually happy somebody's distributing it. I was getting worried that this is gonna like not even gonna show anywhere. I was like, God damn it, man! They already showed us some pictures, and I want to see this. I have no idea what it's about. It looks like an alternate universe where Rome and New York is combined in the future. And there's going to be like some kind of nuclear explosions. I don't know. That's crazy. And then, of course, my, my, my name is Adam Driver. I, I was in Star Wars. Kylo Ren. He's going to be in it. It's crazy. I think he's the main character and shit. That's fucking badass. That motherfucker Shia LaBeouf. Look at him. He looks woke as fuck. I think he's like the mayor or the king of the city or something. Uh, I, 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 I want to see this. I really, really want to see this. I think whenever it comes out, I'll review it that Friday and I'll show you stuff. Uh, like I usually do from, from the movie. It, this is badass. I am happy. This is good news for everybody who is into Roman orgies, homosexuality, debaucherous, and destruction. Uh, and uh, and 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 Marvel. This is for you. All right, we're moving on. We're getting too carried away. Fuck you, Lionsgate. I, I said we're moving on. Get the fuck out of the screen. Anyways, here's one for the cunt out there, motherfucker. I know you're going to enjoy this one. 
But they showed the first picture because now it's official. They've started filming the Night of the Seven Kingdoms, the Hedge Knight, the Duncan Egg prequel show that takes place 100 years before the Game of Thrones. And here he is, Sir Duncan the Tall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he looks kind of like how I pictured he would look. Uh, fuck yeah, bro. He looks pretty tall, too. I can't wait to see characters next to him. Because this guy is supposed to be from the same lineage. He's like the, an ancestor of Brienne of Tarth, this hot lesbian. Oh, straight lesbian, I might add. Oh, yeah, man. She was badass. And she don't want to fuck Jamie Lannister and shit. They could have shown more during that sex scene. That's all I'm saying. Uh, the first of her kind? A straight lesbian? That's fucking badass, you know? Uh, but yeah, this guy's like a lineage of her. Uh, an ancestor. And, uh... It's only a matter of time. Probably by next week, we'll probably have a picture of Aegon. Aegon the... Is it the third? Yeah, Aegon the third. Uh, Egg. Duncan Egg. Because this is Sir Duncan, and the other kid's going to be named Egg, or the nickname is Egg. But it's Aegon. Aegon the third. Uh, is this a Tigerian little boy? And, uh, and he's going to be next in line to be king. He's the one... Who gives birth? Aegon gives birth. His son is the Mad King. That gives birth to Daenerys. And tries to burn everyone. And Rhaegar gives birth to Rhaegar. Uh, but Aegon the Third is is that king. And uh, and the little boy doesn't want to be king, or he wants to be like a helper to a knight. So he shaves his fucking head. Yeah, Eggs is the first in his line to the baby-faced Tigerians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, what do you mean by baby face? Like, the good Tigerians? Because there was some good Tigerians in the in the House of Dragon. Jaceris was really good, and he was a king that nothing exciting happened to him because he was a nice to everybody. And also, um, where House of Dragon ends, there's fucking, uh... What's his name? A Aegon, the the second? No, not the. No, it's not Aegon. Oh my god! I don't. I don't. I forget the 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 kid they marry. The last one, the one that survives, that they marry to end the war with the other kid with the greens and the blacks. That kid's reign was peaceful and boring too. Uh, but, yeah, the Tigerians are all dicks, and, you're, and uh, I can't wait for this series, because in this series, you'll see how they're all dicks, because they always win the annual jousting tournament, uh, and so then, like, they rally motherfuckers to say, this is the year that they're not gonna win. <laughs> this is gonna be a good, that's just what the show is, it's just the jousting tournament. It's probably going to be only one season. I don't see why this could be like a fucking four or five seasons. You could tell the whole story in one season. Uh, but it's going to be a good story, bros. Uh, I'm, I'm excited. You know, I didn't read the books, but I have seen uh, the graphic novel that Marvel Comics did. It's the whole story. It's the graphic, no it's a graphic novel comic book. It's the whole story. Uh, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's badass. It's badass. I'm glad this is happening. I'm glad they're getting shot. And I can't wait to see Aegon, the little boy. Uh, and he's probably going to be super small compared to this tall motherfucker. That little kid looked young, too. He looked like a little baby, like his face. He looked really young. Uh, but yeah. You know who's going to be on this show? Is Amon. Master Amon is going to be on here. He's actually the one who's next in line in the throne. And I don't know. I don't think they're going to show in the show because I think this happens after this. But what ends up happening is that Amon decides to not be uh, king and he goes to the wall. 
And that's why Master Aben stays in the wall. And so then the next in line is Aegon the Third, which is the little boy. And the little boy becomes king. Uh, and then this guy becomes his knight of the whatever. I don't forget what they called the, you know, the guy like Jamie Lannister, the guy who's in charge of the our forces. I forget what they call that guy. But that's what this guy becomes to the king, to Aegon. Yeah, 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 Master Aemon. So yeah, this is the closest as far as because they're doing a bunch of prequels. This show is the closest to the Game of Thrones as far as it. Oh, it's only a hundred years before. So at least Aemon, Master Aemon will be there. Well, he won't be a maester, Master Aemon. He won't be a maester. He just he'll be the next in line. Uh, but he'll be on this show. And uh, I think that's it. I mean, they might, like I said, this guy's a lineage and, and stuff. But no one else from the other show. I always wanted them to do the Robert Baratheon Rebellion with Rhaegar. Where Rhaegar and and the, the fucking daughter, you know, uh, Stannis Baratheon's uh you know wife to be or whatever where she ran away with Rhaegar and he got her pregnant and had a kid and then they had Jon Snow I wanted them to do that fucking series that's the series they should have done the Robert's Rebellion or whatever it was called a bar something's bar Rebellion I think it was Robert's Rebellion something like that that's the fucking series I wanted them to do yeah, Ned and Rob fucking shit up when they're young, fighting the war and trying to find the 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 fucking the the the, the sister, only to find out that she's giving birth to Jon Snow and that she was actually in love with Rhaegar. That would have been the perfect show, man. And you know, they, of course, they didn't do it. We're you know, just like whatever. Disappointments after disappointments with this fucking fat son of a bitch, George R. R. Martin. We're moving on. Fuck you, George R. R. Martin. When it comes down to it, you piss me off because you haven't even written the last book and there's not going to be a Jon Snow show and we're never, never going to find out where the fuck the dragon took Khaleesi's body. If he was going to take her somewhere to have her resurrected, maybe she comes back as the new Ice Queen from the dead to take her revenge on Jon Snow and the Seven Kingdoms. But no! Fucking, this lazy son of a bitch hasn't even written, finished writing The Winds of Winter. Fuck you. We're moving on. Uh, we're not done <laughs> with Game of Thrones, though. Because we had the premiere of House of Dragon, episode one of season two. And it was lame as fuck. Uh, they are saying that this season two premiere only brought on only brought in 7.8 million viewers on Sunday night. Last premiere season one brought in 10 million. Now that's not a big drop or whatever, but I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't see any advertisements on TV for this show or on YouTube. You know how you see ads. I didn't see no advertisements, not even on Twitter. So I think it also has to do with some people didn't even know this shit was premiering. That's what I think. So I think maybe the ratings will go up next week or whatever. But as far as why I'm saying it's I'm showing you the best parts or whatever, like always. Why it was lame? Well... For instance, uh, as far as sex scenes, I'm showing them to you. And it's pretty tamed. Because it's really nothing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, Game of Thrones is known for fucking showing dicks and fucking showing, like, it looks like people are really having sex and shit like that. Like, this is some soft core, soft core fucking bullshit they showed here. Which is really lame, because the actress you saw that was getting head earlier, she said, Man, me and this guy, we acted out this crazy sex scene. It was really animalistic, and it was crazy. And the director didn't even use it. 
She goes, they just, they cut everything off. It was just really tame compared to everything we filmed. Yeah, you want to know why he didn't use it? Because he has it at home and he's jacking off to it right now. You dumb bitch. God damn it. So yes, Nenna's sex is really tamed and lame compared to Game of Thrones and compared to House of Dragon season one. And here's the worst part. There is no blood. There is no gore. There is nothing violent in this episode at all. At all. Hell, at the end of the episode, blood and cheese fucking cut the head off of that little boy. And you don't even see it. I'm, I show it to you. The, the girl grabs the other baby and runs away. And you kind of see the guy going like that on the cradle. Right here, this part. But that's it. You know, this is a game of thrones. You thought you would have seen some fucking shit. No, nothing. No blood. No, no. This is very disappointing. Now, mind you, of course, this is the first episode. And I knew the first episode of season two was going to be lame because it was not. I said the war and the, the, the action is not going to start until after they kill the, you know, a son for a son. What they said. That's the next episode. That's where everything ramps up because because these bitches get mad. You, you just killed this son. Yeah. And from then on, the war really begins. And we're going to start seeing action from here on. And I knew this was going to be lame as fuck. Like, I really did. I mean, I said uh, I was not expecting much. But the fact that the sex scenes were lame, there was no deaths, no fucking blood. Especially on the parts where there should have been stuff like that. I mean, this is Game of Thrones. You have a certain fucking criteria when it comes down to how fucking bloody and gory you're being. And then you don't even do nothing for it for this at all. When there was opportunities for you, you don't do nothing with it. And shit. Ah. Uh, it was okay. I mean, it's nothing special. I did notice the main thing, if you're a nerd cut that they did change was uh blood and cheese at the end uh because she's missing a kid Aegon, uh agon because i think that's his name agon and his sister are supposed to have three kids they have three kids and when blood and cheese get there uh they fucking make her choose which of the two boys because there's two boys and a little girl and they said, son for a son. So they said, which of the two boys do you want us to kill? And because the the other one's younger and shit, and the other one's the heir, she says the young one. And blood and cheese say, you stupid bitch. And she goes, of course we're not going to kill the young one. We're, we're going to kill your the heir. He goes, we're going to kill the heir. And we're going to leave the young one so that he remembers that you chose him to die instead of his brother. And then they, they kill the other one in front of her. And she goes crazy. And then the little boy's also fucked up because he just saw that the mom fucking chose me to die instead of my brother and shit. That's not in there. Uh, so that's one major thing they changed that I know I saw right away. Um... But from here on, it's going to pick up, bros. It's definitely going to pick up. Uh, we're going to see dragons fighting. It's going to be badass. It's going to suck because everyone's going to everyone's gonna die. Every character you're seeing is going to fucking die. And the only ones that are going to be left alive is um, two of the kids. One from each side. Uh, and they marry them. That's how the war ends. Everyone's gonna die and all the dragons are gonna die. <laughs> this is gonna be the worst series ever because if you thought Game of Thrones was disappointing because there are no happy endings, there are no happy ending on this. This is why there's this is gonna show you why there's no more dragons when we get to Game of Thrones. Shit, there's no more dragons in the Hedge Knight. So that goes for that. Uh see episode one, season two. It's all right. I'm disappointed. To me, it's not caliber of Game of Thrones and shit or House of Dragons season one. It's not caliber. 
I think it's really tamed. Uh, there should have been more death and gore. Uh, sex. Nudity. I mean, I didn't even see a single penis. It was very disappointing. Very, very disappointing. Uh, but we'll see what this next Sunday comes. Uh, how fast the story's gonna go. I'm, that's what I'm more curious about is how fast the pace of the story is going to go. Because as the season goes, I think I'll be able to tell how many seasons this whole thing is going to be. Um, because there was a time jump between the first and the second one. And I have a feeling there's going to be another time jump. I think these kids are going to get older. And I don't know if there'll be a time jump in this season... Or if they're just going to wait and do the third season and already they're older. Different actors. Which is probably the safest thing to do. But I'll, I'm curious as to how fast paced this story is going to be. And how many seasons they're going to stretch it out to. Uh, that's what I'm curious. We'll see. Uh, it's still a good show. But if you're going to watch if anything this week that I recommend... And I've been recommending since last week. It's The Boys. Season 4. This was a badass fucked up episode. Not a lot happened. But a lot of fucked up shit happened. Uh, basically, and I'm showing you all the fucked up shit that happened. But basically, uh, Homelander goes back to... The place where he was raised. Like a lab rat and shit. Oh my god, I'm, I just, I'm seeing this shit. This is, this is a fucked up part too. I'll explain that in a minute. And when Homelander goes back there, he starts being a dick to all these people because these people did experiments on him. He told this one guy like, hey, I remember this room. You used to put me in here and turn up the temperature and then see my skin melt off and grow back and shit. And he told the guy, now it's your turn. Get in there. And he made the guy get in there and he burned him and everybody was looking. And then he told this other guy, he says, hey, remember when I was a teenager and whenever I was alone, I would masturbate. And then one day you caught me and you made fun of me uh, because, you know, I was I was here supposed to be here in my room alone. But you you caught me. He goes, I want you to jerk off in front of all of us. And this guy makes some fucking jerk off in front of everyone and he gets mad and he says you better make your dick hard or i'm gonna blow a hole in it and then this guy's like really trying you know and he says i can't and homelander's just making fun of him and laughing at him and then he gets mad and blows a dick uh, blows a hole through him and shit um some lady at the end shows up and she was like i guess the mother figure and she tells homelander like everyone was afraid of you when you were born when you were a baby your beams shot out of your you killed your mother the beams shot out of her belly and shit and you came out flying and you killed a nurse and two doctors he goes well, everybody's been afraid of you since you were born because you're a fucking walking time bomb and shit can you blame us and uh, Homelander basically kills everybody and leaves her in that room where, where that was his room growing up, that little room. And he kills everybody and he leaves her locked in there to see everybody dead. You see all these dead bodies and shit. And he's all covered in blood and ass. It's fucking nuts, bros. Uh, as far as the heroes and what's going on with them, um, Huey's dad is dying and so Huey's trying to steal... Uh, Compound V and gets fucking A Train to steal it from Homelander to give it to his father. And he does, and the father wakes up, but who knows what's gonna do to the dad because he's gonna get powers and probably start dying or some crazy shit like that. Kamiko, or whatever her name is, she f meets some girl that. I don't know. I don't understand that story. I guess Kamiko got trained to be an assassin and she used to also go catch other girls so that they could train and now this girl's mad at her i guess uh frenchie's doing some gay stuff but i guess the guy kind of forgives him because he gives him good dick or something like that um butcher's still dying and gets powers and shit 
Uh, but he doesn't understand the new powers that he has. Oh, man, there's so much gore in this show. You see, this is what was missing from fucking the House of the Dragon. This show has everything. It has penises. It has fucking uh, blood and gore and violence. You know, look at this. Starlight beats the shit out of this fucking Christy Meyer chick in the fucking live television. Because this Christy Meyer chick uh, fucking comes out. And, and and just on live television exposes that this chick is a Christian and that she had an abortion. And, and it's crazy, bro. And this, this chick gets mad and starts beating the shit out of her. Oh, and this chick, the deep goes to this black chick and says, How come sometimes you're a bitch to me and then sometimes you want to fuck? And this chick basically tells him, look, my superpower is my brain grows and it gets smarter and smarter and smarter. And the smarter I get, the more disconnected I am from people. And I don't, you know, everyone's beneath me. And he goes, but if I do a lobotomy on me and then kill my brain, I'm kind of dumb and stupid like everyone else. And I could be normal. He goes, by tomorrow morning, my, my brain will reheal and I'll be smart again. But for a few hours, I get to be normal. And so she tells Deep, I need you to give me a lobotomy. And the Deep is all like, I'm not going to poke you in the eye. That's crazy. And she says, I'll let you fuck me in the ass while we watch the Kim Kardashian sex tape. And this guy's all like, let's do it. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious, bros. And so he fucking gives her a lobotomy, bro. And then she's like, she, she says something like, oh, I got some fast food for you. And she goes, my pussy. And he's all like, fuck yeah. And he jumps on her. It's fucking hilarious, bro. I got to tell you, this little black girl is my favorite fucking character of this season. Uh, she's supposed to be the smartest person in the world. Uh, but just, he's just, her character is fucking badass. <laughs> they just came out of nowhere. Uh, I love this show. I still think this is one of the best shows. It's satire to our culture right now. And I think that's why the critics are hating this 100% is because this show is making fun of them and the pussies can't handle somebody criticizing them because they criticize others, you pussies. Uh, this is a good show. If you're going to watch anything entertaining or pay for something, it's the boys. Uh, if you haven't started watching it, you have to fucking start watching it from season one. This is season four already. And it's going to end next season. Season five will be the final one. You'll be hooked instantly. I started seeing it on season three. Like... I saw the first episode of season three and I was like, what the fuck is this? So I went back and I watched it from the beginning from season one and I binge watched it. This show is amazing and it's great. Uh, this show is amazing and it's great. Um, I, I love this show. Uh, the writers are perfect. Anthony Starr, Homelander, is a great fucking actor, man. This guy's my favorite fucking character. Homelander is my favorite character. It's crazy because he's like the craziest, most evilest person ever. And I just want to see more of him. <laughs> it's nuts. It's a good show. It's a good show. It's a very, very good watch. Uh, like I said, I highly recommend it. All right, enough of the good stuff. Let me take a sip of water because that was actually something good we were talking about. We're about to get into the main ass because none other than James Gunn continues with his I'm better than you bullshit showing off on his Twitter and his threats, confusing the utter shit. Out of all of his fans and followers and DC fanatics and nerds. And here's why I'm telling you this guy is so fucking smart that even he doesn't even know what he's saying. He says to some nerd. Yes, Peacemaker takes place after Superman. And then this nerd named Blue881Blue. He asks him to his rebuttal. Including season one, Mr. Gunn. And he says, season one is in canon. But no. What? So, Peacemaker takes place after Superman. 
I guess season two takes place right after Superman. But season one from Peacemaker season two is not canon. Then why the fuck is it called Peacemaker season two, you idiot? Ugh. And if it's not canon, we're gonna start from the beginning. I mean, is Suicide Squad canon, Mr. Gunn? I I feel like I should be asking questions, but this son of a bitch would never respond to me because he knows goddamn right I'll call him out on this bitch has lying. Son of a bitch. Anyways, fuck you, James Gunn. He didn't stop with the showing off like, oh, yeah, I'm Steve Jobs. I'm better than you in my fucking black shirt and fucking white hair, spiky hair and shit. Fuck you. I have white hair too, son of a bitch, and I braid it. You don't see me showing off. Anyways, well, he's not done showing off, everybody. Because he went off and wanted to tell people how much of a fucking nerd he is and how much more of a nerd and better he is than any of you. And he says, today... He's probably spitting his, his facts, his nerd facts that he, he grew up with or knows because he read on the Wikipedia or some ass. Copy paste it. Today is the anniversary of Kendra Saunders' first appearance as Hawk Girl. While Kendra took flight in the Justice League of America Secret Files number one in 1999, under the writers James Robinson and David S. Goyer, and artists Louis Small Jr. and Michael Blair. Fuck you for copying and pasting all this ass, James Gunn. Hawk Girl first hit the stands in 1940 as Sierra Sanders Hall in Flash Comics number one, written by Gardner Fox and drawn by Dennis Neville. All these fucking facts and shit that he copied and pasted. Fuck you. I'm so excited for Isabella Merced, this little hottie, to don the wings in Superman. Art from Hot Girl number two by Adriano Lucas and Aman K. Nuka Puka Pekka Puka or some shit. <sighs> Basically, from all this copying and pasting from all these sites and stupid bullshit he put right here, what he was trying to say is that Isabella Merced is going to play the Kendra Saunders Hot Girl version, the more modern one. And he shows the picture. So basically, she's going to look like green and gold and some wings and, and, some, and some, a helmet or a mask of some sorts. Hopefully with white eyes. The way Deadpool and Wolverine look, James Gunn. Don't fuck it up. That's all I'm trying to say. Uh, this little girl's sexy. I don't know what the costume's going to look like. But if she doesn't have a mallet like this, it's going to be ass. That's all I'm going to say. James Gunn, you better not fuck up. You idiot. You already, every day on the internet, I got to listen to your bullshit. We're not done with this asshole. Well, he wasn't done. He said, no, no, I need more. Here we go, some more. Behind the scenes pictures. Everybody, this motherfucker invited some of the BLMs. And the stars of the Acolyte to show up and watch the Superman. He invited a bunch of motherfuckers and none other than Christopher Pratt showed up. Star-Lord himself, Christopher, I believe in Jesus fucking Christ. And my wife is a Nazi. Pratt showed up and was watching Superman. Getting ready for his secret DC role. Not going to be Booster Gold. I don't know he's going to be. Probably be Two-Face or Batman or somebody like that. I don't know. Fuck you, James Gunn. Hiding all your friends and shit. Is that Shia Buff back there? I think that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's right back there. Um, You know, there is something that no one is talking about or noticing. But I notice it. This person right here, this they them sitting in the front row right next to James Gunn in front of Christopher Pratt, by the way, meaning they're more important. Who is they? 
or them? I think I know. I think it's none other than my time to shine. The infamous leaker that's been licking, leaking shit all over the internet. Look at the avatar. It looks just like the avatar. Except he's not wearing the fucking horn or whatever the fuck this costume that he's wearing. But look at his face. He's got the same smile and the same beady eyes and shit. I think this is they, them. My time to shine. Fucking James Gunn, you fucking idiot. You've been harboring the leaker this whole time right there. You think it's your friend? Oh, hey, I met you yesterday at the bar. You sound cool. You want to come and see everything? You idiot. Who do you think's leaking all this shit out there to the public? You dumbass. I would never, never allow any person who looked like this to come into my set. Son of a bitch. I could tell by his face he's ready to fucking spill this shit on the internet. Fuck you, James Gunn, you idiot. The leaker is sitting there right next to you. Okay, dumbass. We're moving on from James Gunn and his ass. And we're moving on to some spoilers coming off the set of James Gunn and his ass. And this is none other than the behind the scenes look of Metropolis's newspapers. They've turned this whole city block into Metropolis, fellas. I'm not gonna show it because it's boring. There's a cars and destruction and ass. Nah, 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 nah. I'm gonna show when they show good stuff. And this is from a newspaper that this guy said, I literally walked down the street right in the middle of the set with my cell phone. No one told me anything. He goes, I thought, I think they thought I worked there. <laughs> this guy said, literally said, I just walked down the street with my phone. They didn't say nothing to me. Taking pictures. Um, but he took this, he saw because the newspaper has stands. And he goes, the newspaper had, the, the stand had this paper. Superman stops the rail from running off the tracks. And there he is in all his glory. Kind of lame because it's just a Photoshop image and shit. Or whatever. Uh, but we got another one of these Daily Planet's ass. And this one's called the Metropolis Eagle. And it says that Superman saves 20 after downtown building collapse. And they have a picture of him there sitting, standing tall with his trunks and shit. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's, we still haven't seen any actual filming and stuff, but, you know. I don't know if they cover the set when they start filming. Because I see them put like sheets of, you know, like tarp or something. Maybe when they start filming, they do that or whatnot. Uh, but I don't know. Like, I guess. It doesn't look too bad from what I'm seeing, but we'll see when the trailer comes out. How ridiculous James Gunn makes this look all right i will start giving this guy credit when we haven't seen anything fuck this guy fuck you james gunn all right let's get into the main thing that everyone been talking about this week and i'll try to be brief on it but none other because i'm sure you've already heard all this ass but none other than the lesbian the acolyte which currently has dropped down to 85% for the motherfucking critics. And has dropped down to 14% in the audience. This was the fucking boring ass episode that nothing, absolutely nothing happened. I'm just showing you the only cool stuff that happened. Which isn't a lot. Out of a fucking, I don't know how long this was, 40 minutes. Uh, it's excuse. It's just horrible watching this. Some of the worst fucking dialogue and writing in anything I've ever seen in my life. And then, oh, they have the nerve to fucking put in this character. Uh, this 
conehead looking motherfucker from the original trilogies. And they put him in here. And this is a big controversy because the star with the real nerds, you know, because I'm a fan and everything, but I'm not any nerds that I know everyone's age and their backstory, where they grow. If it came out in the movie, that's as far as I know, you dumb sons of bitches, unless it has to do with the Siths. I fucking really, really researched the Siths extensively. All right. All of them from XR Kuhn to fucking uh, Darth Raven and Malik. Uh, all of them. All right, I have a whole, I have a life-size statue in my room of uh, fucking Darth Nihilus, motherfuckers. I've shown it to you in the past. Uh, but when it came to the Sith, I know a lot. But motherfuckers figured out that this guy shouldn't even be alive at this time if he came out in the original trilogies. And so they're coming out and are talking mad shit and, and pointing out how all this ass, nobody even knows their own continuity. And then, of course... Kathleen Kennedy and their people are saying, well, it doesn't matter because we're rewriting canon. So, yes, he was alive back then, which makes no fucking sense when you think about it. Uh, because that means he was probably like 150 years old or some ass like that. I don't know how old he could have been. Uh, it didn't make any sense, and the nerds are mad about it. They're starting some hashtag, uh, I believe, in Wikipedia, which is the nerds and shit. Anyways, the main thing people hate is this stupid little rat, otter, rocket raccoon, whatever the fuck it is, is identified as a non-binary, and their pronouns are they and them. And from now on, it is said that Lucas and Disney is going to move forward calling creatures and animals and subspecies in the Star Wars universe as theys and thems. And that is pissing everyone off. That why do you keep inserting modern pop culture into Star Wars that's not supposed to be our fucking anything at all? It takes place somewhere else with different cultures. It's not supposed to be what we are. But yes, we have to look like what we see on TV, apparently. Uh, this little girl who's being led by Ezra Miller over here, for whatever reason... Turns on him. No explanation at all. He goes off and when he comes back, she sets a trap and she tells him, I'm going to go tell the Jedi and confess and turn myself in. I don't want to be a bad guy anymore. What? Why? She just spent the last fucking three episodes killing people. Killing Jedis. And being a bad guy. You saw her growing up as a little girl being a bad little girl. And she burned everyone to the ground and deaths and be killing people her whole life. And all of a sudden, for no reason at all, she just changes her mind. Some of the worst fucking writing ever. Worse. Horrible. Makes no sense. It's like like some fucking 12-year-old in elementary school wrote this ass. Just, just doesn't even make sense in the story they are trying to write. No explanation. She changes her mind and decides to be a good guy. And she fucking says, I don't care. I'm going to turn myself in. So when she goes to the Jedi, the Wookiee's already dead. Killed by a lightsaber. Which, again... Makes no fucking sense in Star Wars logic. A lightsaber literally cauterizes you right away. And if this guy died long before she arrived there, it wouldn't still be burning and flesh like that. Not only that, but that wound in itself wouldn't kill you. We've seen people in this new Star Wars universe, because not in the old one, but in this new one, we've seen people get stabbed right through the middle, come out the other end with a lightsaber, and those motherfuckers survive. So why does a slash across the chest suddenly kill you? Makes no fucking sense in their own universe they're creating. Anyways, so apparently Dark... Sith Lords 
can float and fly now. Because this guy floats down from the heavens. What? What? I mean, Obi-Wan couldn't even float around. Nonetheless, Yoda and shit. Uh. Anyways, this fucking guy who's obviously, this is obviously the Ezra Miller character. That's who this is. I mean, at least that's who I think it is. Um. Uh. Yeah. This was a cool part. So he just kind of taps like that and pushes her away all badass. And then these guys are about to fight and he pushes them all away with a force push. So this guy is more powerful than all the Jedis and shit. Uh, I think the Jedi are suspecting that it's an ex-Jedi that they trained because who else would know the force? Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't care. It's a mystery. Uh, frankly, I don't give a fuck about it. I'm just watching it to review it. And luckily, I don't pay for Disney Plus. I pay for Winscribe VPN, and I download everything and watch it for free in the same ass quality as you do. Except I don't give Disney my fucking money because they haven't earned my money until they give me some quality ass good writing. Because the only thing Lucas is good for nowadays is special effects. To this day, I cannot shit on any of their visual effects, their sets, their costumes, their CGI. All of that is always top notch. Better than any DC movie. Better than any Marvel fucking programming. Better than any Disney shit. Lucas is always on top of their visuals. 100%. I'll give them that. But. The writing sucks. And them inserting their fucking political bullshit agendas. That has nothing to do with Star Wars. That's what, what kills it. The writing. Them, them not having any prior knowledge of any kind of, obviously, of any kind of Star Wars lore. Uh, them trying to, uh, let's just write something, make something up. Uh, that's, that shit just doesn't work. When, when hundreds of books, comic books, and movies have already been written about the lore. And then you said, well, let's just, let's just make our own thing up. That's not how you make good stuff. Not when there's already thousands of years of lore established. That's not how it works, buddy. That's why you're failing. I'm not going to trash any of the actors or the acting because I don't think the acting is bad. I think the dialogue is bad. And uh, as far as the worst thing the actors and directors have done, and producers, have done for the show is do interviews. Because all they've done is fucking make this fiasco into a bigger pile of shit by speaking, unfortunately. Um... This little girl, everyone's talking about it. She made a rap song last night, dissing everybody for di that this is the acolyte, and talking about how that that they're just oppressing them. And it's like, oh my god, uh, you know. And and I don't want to get into it because I'm not here to trash little girls. Uh, but when it comes down to is that the, this little girl has been rich for all her life. If you look it up, you will find out. Uh, she has a white dad and a white mom, a black mom, and then they've always been rich and privileged. And she's actually been working at Disney as a child star for a very long time. So, this is probably somebody who knows nothing about actual racism, has nothing about oppression, nothing about suffering. And nothing about living like a common fucking person. And yet she's angry that people don't like the show. And I understand. Because when you're young and you believe in something. And I understand. Uh, and it's not her fault that she was giving trash to act. You know. 
And and I get it. She wants to defend what she's a part of. But the worst thing that these actors are doing is opening their mouths and making the, sh the pile of shit bigger. She made a rap video, a rap song, and just, it's just, it's, uh, I'm not going to show it here. Everyone's showing it already. It's cringeworthy. It's embarrassing, even. Um, and I guess this is, this is where, what we're, we've come to. This is where we are now. Where Star Wars is a joke. And that people that are actual fans and, and used to enjoy it and like it, they don't even want to say that they're fans anymore. I remember there, there used to be at this job that I worked at, uh, a little girl that was a Trekkie. Now I was a Star Wars fan. And we would fight all the time and I did fan Star Wars. And then the new movies came out and she would make fun and I couldn't even defend it. And I was like, no, you're right. You're right. I'm like, fuck Ray. You're right. Fuck Finn, like you're right, they're ruining it. You're right, you're right. I told her, I'm like, yeah, you're right. And uh, and it got to the point where I couldn't even it ended. Our battles ended, our daily battles ended, where I just couldn't tell her anything anymore because there was nothing I could fucking defend from this fucking franchise anymore. Disney did kill it. I can't defend it anymore. And quite frankly, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't want to say that I ever was a fan. And I feel bad for all of the, my wall and surrounded by Sith lore and Sith Dark Lords. Because all of this is basically erased from canon now and none of it matters. Because the only Sith is this little girl and whatever this fucking smiley face bad guy is and shit. Uh, it's just ass. We'll see you next week for more ass when it comes to this. Let's move on from the Acolyte. Don't watch it. Watch videos of other people talking about how shitty it is. But don't watch it. It's very, very sad, horrible writing. That's what it is. Horrible writing. There's some scenes that are cringy. Cringy as fuck. Uh, but let's finish this off with some of this Marvel Sony shit. And some of the things that was revealed this week is that at some point in time before Jonathan Majors beat a white woman, Kevin Feige had a plan, and the plan was to have Kang the Conqueror meet Miguel Ojara in the multiverse, and both of them team up to rule the multiverse and the timelines and shit. And that was going to be, these two were going to be the bad guys that the Avengers were going to have to fight. Was going to be both of them. Of course, Sony's a dumbass. And they said no. At the same time, that might have been hindsight because maybe they knew this guy was beating women. They said, no, nah, it's a bad idea. We don't want to be associated with his ass. So, yeah, this could have been good, but it could have been bad. This could have been just another bullet that Sony just dodged and shit. No, no, this guy looks dangerous. We saw his eyes, the way he looked at our intern. No, 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 we don't want anything to do with him, they said. Uh, and that's why they didn't do it, you know. Besides, it would have been a stupid idea, Kevin Feige, because fucking uh, Oscar Isaac is already Moon Knight. So what are you going to have? Moon Knight come out right next to Spider-Man 2099? The same fucking face? You dumbass. You know what? A multiverse doesn't work. And having two different studios trying to tell separate stories doesn't work. is because you're using the same actors. Like fucking uh, Chief Fofio Manovo Fofo. Or whatever the fuck that guy's name is. My boy Chai. Over there. Baron Mordo. From fucking Doctor Strange. He's coming on the Venom movie. Being some other character. Nothing to do with it. Like... That's what I'm talking about and shit. This is just two studios just fucking up the world for the fans. The multiverse. Fucked up. Fuck you, Sony. And fuck you, Kevin Feige. We're ending it with the last for tonight. An exciting, not rumor, but more conversation that was had. Sean Levy, the Deadpool director for this new Deadpool Wolverine who is predicted to rejuvenize and then finally bring back to life the last past shitty five years of MCU movies. Deadpool Wolverine, Sean Levy. 
It's about to make a billion dollars, finally, for the studio. It's been over five years. They asked him in the interview, are you going to do a fourth Deadpool if they ask you to? Because we know that he's in talks to do the Avengers movie or Secret Wars or whatever the fuck. They want him to do it. But he said, 100% for Deadpool 4, I would say yes right away. And he says, and I already know what I want for Deadpool 4. Because we got Deadpool Wolverine for Deadpool 3. If they give me Deadpool 4, I want to do Spidey Pool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this motherfucker would love to do Spider-Man Deadpool. Which would be badass and amazing. But there is no way, absolutely no fucking way, Sony would ever play ball and allow this. They would never allow Spider-Man, Tom Holland, to be in the rated R movie with ass and dick jokes and shit like that. They wouldn't. Not to Spider-Man. Spider-Man's too much of a cash cow for kids. And they wouldn't. They couldn't. They couldn't do it. Uh, they wouldn't allow it. And that would be the problem uh, that they would face Sean Levy if he would attempt this. I don't think Sony would ever allow Tom Holland to come out in a Deadpool movie with Deadpool stuff in it. That's just what I think. If you want to go see a Deadpool Spider-Man movie, go watch the porn. It's already out there. It's actually pretty good. Deadpool fucks Mary Jane. Uh, Spider-Man gets all sad. And so then they go to Doctor Strange uh, to try to take them back into the past so they can undo uh, Deadpool fucking Mary Jane. He fucks Captain Marvel. I think Spider-Man gets taken to another reality and ends up fucking Spider-Gwen or some shit like that. It's a pretty good movie. Check it out. It's a damn shame Kevin Feige doesn't follow these fucking porns. Probably make better movies than the ass they've been making the past four years. Anyways, that's it. I've done enough ranting for tonight, motherfuckers. Uh, so, uh, all I'm gonna say is uh, leave you with a little bit of life advice to take home for the evening. And th pay attention because this is actually some life advice that actually gonna save your life one day. If you're ever stuck in this situation. If you ever a plane crashes or a boat sinks or for some strange fucking reason, you're in the middle of the ocean naked with nothing on you. No island, no land for thousands of miles. You're in the middle of the motherfucking ocean, naked, nothing on you. You don't know what the fuck to do. You're getting tired, hungry, thirsty, and shit. And you see an airplane flying by. Your only chance to yell for help, but they're not gonna hear you because you're up high. This is what you do, you motherfucker. You take the deep breath. And you take the fucking dive and you dive as far as you go down and then turn yourself up forward and you fucking swim as fast as you can straight up the water and you jump out the water as high as you can like a fucking dolphin and you pray to God that the airplane sees you. If not, you're just going to fucking die. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what I would do if that was in that situation. All right. But that's it for tonight, motherfuckers. Thank you for being here, and we'll see you next week. Cheers! What the fuck, man? Fucking running like lady, eh? <laughs>